Hello! Hello! I can usually do this bit. Uh, welcome to Everything In Between. Hello, Hello welcome to the Everything In Between podcast where you to talk about video games and uh, everything in between. I'm joined here by Daniel this week to talk about a board game. Yes, not Overwatch. I've been physically banned from mentioning it. Damn it! And uh, of course I'm joined by a regular host, uh, Tony. Hey, that's me. And uh, let's get on. Let's get right to the news. I knew you were going to do it. I knew you were going to do that. <laughs> well, it's a little known fact. I am actually Daniel Keemstar. But, uh, <laughs> Banned 500 times from YouTube. I, he actually puppets this channel much like Peter Martin here. <laughs> that is to true. Get, his, get his ad revenue through it. Yeah, that's how but, it uh, exists. Uh, I'll, I'll go to um, you, Tony, because you, you probably have played the least games this week. Yeah. So. yeah. Wait, Tony, hold on. Be quiet just for one second. Okay, I'm wondering if the bells from the church are going to pick up in the corner because it'll be funny. Go on, Tony. <laughs> so you'll edit them in later. Oh yeah, I'll just edit in the, the bells. Give me a second, right? I, I've only been playing Prison Architect this week, and oh god, so good. I mean, I'm, I'm at a part where I'm completely stuck and can't do anything, as is the way. You need to sell Sounds like Fallout Shelter, which I also did play this uh, week as well. Uh, did the you? PC version. Yeah. Oh yes, I forgot about that. Yeah. There's a PC version of Fallout Shelter. Yeah, they just released it recently. Oh, today I learned. But uh, I played on it for like a couple of hours, but you, you just keep running out of things to do. Like Yeah. yeah. Prison Art is kind of the opposite. Oh, you run out of, you run out of money and there's too many things to do. You can kind of just send your people out to go and die get more stuff. But they all they, die. Yeah, they, do, they die a lot. And it's kind of just like, here's some more settlers, put them into no, different rooms. You can rush this. If the rushing fails, you have to fix that problem. It's like, what do I do now? I've got nothing to do. You can buy a microtransaction lunchbox and speed this up. And it's like, it's, it's, it's very aimed at the microtransaction market. I was, I was watching this interesting video the other day by, um, I think it's, I, I could have butchered the name, Fox Media or something. Yep. Um, they, they were doing like a look into Pokemon Go and how it's been so popular. And they were saying that certain um, like free to play games are designed to keep you interested long enough until they can raise the difficulty up um, in, uh, enough to get you to buy their microtransaction yeah. skippers, and they change the prices based on um, based on where you are and your information or how old you are. Yeah. So they have like a certain demographic of people who are more wow. willing to buy in-app purchases. So they do massive studies on these things. Like, have you ever wondered what the reason is that you have to wait ten seconds before you open a crate? It's like it's in gam- it's the gambling. It's it's a case of saying I've bought this key or I open it it builds tension and they did studies to say did people like that and it turned out that people associated the noise with the opening and the creaking of the oh yeah yeah nostalgia is like pleasure essentially you're yeah like, oh, oh, but, and then it opens you're like oh, but you can't like, have it 15 bell. seconds though because that's like the was, maximum limit of being bored I was watching a Tom Scott video who does um, things you might not know videos on YouTube and he was talking about shopping centres and how the first like shopping mall shopping centre came along he said one of the tactics they actually use is like they make it so it makes sure natural light comes in you want to spend the much time yeah. in there there's no clocks in yeah, shopping yeah, centers no. i thought no. that was one of the most underhanded tactics i've ever seen well, you don't it, know the time it's the simplest I, thing I have so a watch, like, but... i'm gonna mm. stick time to this get thing that you want milk and bread at the back right hand corner of the shop <laughs> in tesco yeah. so you walk past all the other things you didn't come here for but might buy to get to it. This is quite relevant though, because we will, we will be talking about uh, free-to-play games, so talking about microtransactions and kind of marketing yeah. schemes. I think the reason Pokemon Go has done so well is because of its business model. It's basically, you know, it's not well, overtly shoving microtransactions It's in an the unfinished face. game, but it's doing really well because mm. of how they've done it. I wouldn't say it's unfinished, it's just... No, there are, there are honestly features they want to add that they haven't added yet. Like they haven't added a proper battle system, for example. Yeah, they actually want to add that. Yeah, that would be kind of cool. I mean, if they had the sort of thing where you could do almost like street pass that you get in Nintendo, mm, yeah. except for like your phone. The thing is, though, at this point, Nintendo's got to be thinking, well, this is working really well, but we're not selling consoles for the one hit game that we've got. I thought, they, I thought they were. Usually what's happened. I thought all their stock was going they're, up. They're, they're, well, they're, yeah, their stock's gone up massively, and they no, sold their, that like their their DS, console. Their thing. DS games for Pokemon have gone, the sales have gone through the roof. Really? Oh, I didn't yeah. know that. Because I know they released like that um, mini NES that has like. It's sort of like thirty yeah. or sixty classic titles. The thing is, it. though, you could just you could basically just buy a uh, cherry pie PC and put yeah. an emulator. You on could, it. but that would be technically illegal. 
right? Because well, we don't have to get legal or... things here, yeah, but, but if you could. <laughs> would, yeah, but it's it, it would be. But the, what got me was, you know, the uh, virtual console is something you can buy on DS yeah. and then you can download those games. It's actually cheaper to just buy all of them on the virtual console than it is yeah. to buy wow. that console. So it's not it's not really very good value money at this point. But it, it comes in a cool box, so you know, if you, if you actually ever owned an NES, and I guess that's kind of cool, we were too old. To young. Be young. Young. Too young. old, and you? Our first console was a, uh, the original PlayStation. No, I think the, I think technically we got the Game Boys beforehand. They got, the I Game think Boy Color. Came, yeah, we had one Game Boy Color. The two Game Boy Colors and one Game Boy just original. The black and white. The brick. Yeah. That's actually in a museum now. Yeah, and I think one... One year later, when the PS2 did was coming know, out, we did you got, know that we had a PlayStation One? Yeah, yeah, but when the PS2 was coming out was when we got it, and that's when we had like Hydro Thunder. Because the PlayStation, the, I looked this up the other day. The PlayStation One actually came out before the GameCube, which I found really interesting. Huh. So I thought the GameCube came out before the PS One. Uh, I think I think actually no, I think I did know that the graphics were sort of different. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> Enough about Dungeon. that. <laughs> I, mean, I, I would just talk about all the different Huge. retro Huge Mario games that we used to play. Yeah, there were lots. I still have the um, Game Boy Color in this drawer because I've completed Mar Super Mario Bros. Um, Deluxe so many yeah. times because they made the original SNES uh, Super Mario Bros. onto the Game Boy Color, so I've essentially played, you know, the original Mario yeah. game like <laughs> countless times. You ever so often do that? Get boys like find a Pokemon card, find the Tetris card, mm. find that. I think we lost the Kirby one. I can't find that. Anymore. Do we have Pokemon? Yeah, somewhere. There's a red Pokemon red card somewhere. Yeah. Um, anyway, this week I've been playing Overwatch. Oh, what a job. So they just patched Overwatch, and as we found literally two minutes before the... Uh, so I've got a 34-inch 34, 34 21 by 9 monitor. and um, As you do. As you do. And they've literally just patched in, like, as of the diva change with the well I don't know if it was that patch I well assuming. okay we think it was but um, 21 by 9 support and I had no idea so I've been playing for the past like two weeks with black boxes at either side of the screen like oh yeah. I didn't have until, to have this until just now I walked in your room so I'm fairly sure there's 21 by 9 support and I was like no no I didn't <laughs> know that and then we checked and it yep, totally happened so that happened they buffed diva which was definitely good and I did not think they were going to actually put all the changes they did to it in so they buff Senyata. Yeah, so so Diva's changes now. She has her defense matrix on a toggle, and she can use it basically and it's whenever on right she click wants. Now, so it's really confusing. N only if you want it to be on right click. So it's on it by right click the, by default. Yeah, so that's the, the benefit of rebind of all things. So I I fixed that problem because I used to, I used to right click to like stop mid flight as Diva because you could have like cancel on either side. So to fix that, I, I still spam right reload click. on Diva. Yeah, and in and in Doom. Yeah, that again, really confused me about you Doom. Like, oh, reload! You're like, oh, good. There, there's no, you just have this. as many bullets as you can fire. There's no reload. Yeah, it's kind of strange. Um, and then, yeah, it, you get um, Diva's defense matrix is a toggle, and she can use it whenever she wants, and it just slowly rebuilds, kind of like Farrah's jump jets. Mm. You got her ultimate explosion builds quicker and only takes three seconds to go off as opposed to four and she can't biggest, die that was one of the biggest buffs yeah. she couldn't kill herself with her own ult so she could literally fly into the middle of the team and shoot them while well, this is the thing right it was but going off the amount of people me included I have seen that do that and then instinctively still just run and hide behind cover like oh no the bomb will get me and mm. I still can't get used to it uh, and they made another change that I can't remember what it was uh, Steva yeah oh no that might have been it that's all three I think I yeah know. So then Zenyatta, now when he gets his ult, he moves a whole lot faster. He has 300 health per second rather than 200 yeah. health per second. He moves faster, he heals more, and he has more shields he has, over um, his health. And 50 extra HP, is it? Uh, he has 150 shields, 50 HP. Yeah, there you go. So the shields recharge. And uh, also they nerfed his left click damage, but they increased his right click oh, damage. Oh, and one thing they changed, which was really cool, that I don't think a lot of people knew about this, but when you used to be holding down left click to attack as Zenyatta, you couldn't throw out your healing or uh, your orb of discord while you're doing yeah. it. Now you don't, there's no like stop in the middle. If you're keeping left click held down and tappy, or throw the discord or out with yeah. the ball, so it actually makes a massive difference. And they also changed changed Diva, they changed Zenyatta, they changed Lucio slightly, but it wasn't documented. They added, you're forgetting that the biggest yeah, change. Yeah, we'll get to that, we'll get to that. 
And so they added Lucio, like got this easy ability now as far as I'm concerned. Beforehand it was really hard to um, like wall ride as Lucio. Now you literally just like if you hold can space. wall ride for more than three seconds, you can pretty much wall ride permanently as long as you can stay so now, on the surface. It's even easier than that. You literally just like stick to them and if you get to an inverted corner, like I'm again doing the whole thing where we show mm. things you can't see, but make a right angle with your with your hands, kids. If he was going down your right hand, he would yeah. just snap to the left hand one. He used to just fall off, but now you can actually just snap back on. Yeah, and it's much easier. There's, which I don't think necessarily you need. I think that Lucio was one of those catchers had a high skill ceiling, but he was good for that because otherwise he's kind of he's kind of strong. He, he feels like a must pick a lot of the time. So you're, you're thinking he might be too strong now. I don't no. think he's necessarily too strong. He's not. He's not overpowered, but I don't think right. he needed that one, change. One other person I want to talk about is Anna. We'll get that because there's another change. She's the new I champion. Can't remember who it was? McCree. Was it McCree? Did they change? Him? McCree got changed because um, his uh, he his left click was feeling really weak because they they it has a drop off point oh, of like yeah, medium range. Yeah. But now they've made it so if you're really far away, then it does less damage. But like medium range, you're still doing about the same damage. Mm. So that was a really nice change. But um, I'm sure they tweaked something else. You talk about the new character. They for a they bit. nerfed so. um, Mercy. Did they? Have yeah. They Mercy? Well, they increased her damage boost to um, fifty percent instead of um, thirty oh, percent. That's that's good. But they did something else to her that I don't remember. Um, maybe it's yeah. her movement. I could literally look up the patch notes. That's what I'm doing. Uh, they changed everyone's uh, alt charge numbers like Roadhog, Soldier, uh, those kind of people because they made it, they calculate it now so that self-healing is calculated into your ult charge, so people okay. like Soldier and Roadhog charge faster when they're healing themselves. Oh, that's cool. Isn't it? Isn't so like Roadhog's got 10% less ult charge, um, it charges slower. Uh, uh. Talk amongst yourself kids. Tony, tell us about Overwatch. Yeah, tell us how uh, well, Overwatch is. Oh god, we've left Tony on his own. <laughs> <laughs> all all I up. know, I, I don't think I can really talk about every patch notes. But it bugs me that I don't know. That was those are the main. There's no other changes apart from Anna, who was like a sniper healer. And she's a, she's a cool sniper mum. That's like she's Farrah's mum. She she went away. She came back because she lost her eye, and now she's putting everyone to sleep with the darts and she's healing people up but then she can snipe people and take away their health she can stop people healing with a grenade she can make her heals more effective with a grenade and like it the most powerful thing the about time. her is her ult and her ult is ridiculous so her ult increases the speed with which the character it is used on moves they do more damage and they just they have shield they have like a yeah a slight shield and it's just Oh my god, use that on a uh, an ulting anything, like an ulting... Right Sounds so it's sort of like a medic, medic soldier from TF2 in some ways. Oh, it's, it's way more than that though. Because, you know, you, medic soldier in TF2 is a case of oh, that you are know, invincible yeah. or you do crits, right? Medic yeah. soldier is basically far and mercy. Man. Yeah, whereas with the crits Krieg, although it's like pretty good because you like, oh, I'm only dishing out critical hits, that's pretty cool. With this, you just you, you oh you don't take as much damage, and that's that's the whole point. So if you are a road hulk who's just like basically spitting out his ult, and you're powered up, you just everybody dies. My favorite combo everybody is um, is um, Winston ult plus Anna. That's funny. Yeah, just that's the booster chimp. That's the booster chimp. <laughs> booster <player>. chimp. <laughs> yeah, that's what I like to call it. Yeah. I'm a booster chimp, and then you jump in and you chimp out and you yeah, start right. killing everyone. Go ham. Go monkey. Yeah. Go ahead. But I, apart from Anna's ult, her kit feels really weak. I it's not that bad. At the moment, I think the biggest problem with her is that, like, I imagine if you, before this patch, you were a really good Widowmaker, you're probably a really good Anna. But the problem she is that the she same doesn't, thing, no, she doesn't do, like, the same damage. But as a healer, like, it gives you something to play. What I think could be a good chance is if her shot pierced through fully healed friendlies. Mm. That would be good because at the moment you have like one Roadhog who's already fully health, right? Full, fully health. He's fully healthed. He's yeah. got so much health. Um, but there's like I don't know a, a weak McCree behind him. You can't shoot through his fat ass to actually heal that McCree. You have to just move your position. And she's not quick. She's pretty slow. Well, mm. slow is a weird word in Overwatch because I mean so many of the characters have just different speeds. But yeah, this is this was a good patch. 
Unfortunately, multiplayer. Oh, that's a difference. Um, competitive. They've yeah. made tweaks to competitive now, and the biggest change um, is that there's no hero stacking in competitive anymore. Yeah. You can there only have one. Oh, just, just one, one hero. I never saw hero stacking, though, really. I saw it once or twice um, at the higher ranks. Like, people would. What stack. rank are you? When I started, I was 57, and I literally, because it's so hard to climb the ladder in Overwatch, because we talked about this before, it's basically broken, right? I have now slipped down to 40, I want to say 49 now? Jesus. Yeah, it's like basically impossible to win unless you're I started at 56, and then I went down to about 53, and now I'm back up to 55. Yeah, so. mine's just literally been a downward spiral. It's just been oh. the case of... Um, it is possible to climb. How many people are you queuing with? The, the main, main, main is pretty much solo most of the time. Oh, okay. If, you, if, been... you, if you queue with teammates, it's slightly better, but... The more times than not, I've done better when I've been on my own, but with like a group of four or something. And mm. if they're all in voice chat, you're okay. But th th it's just not possible for me to play. See, I, with I've been climbing when I've been playing with a premium group of five people. See, that's good because that actually works for Overwatch a lot of time when it's actually five because it balances you, balances you against another five. But it's weird. Um, so Overwatch. Overwatch. Yeah. All right. Right. We that that that's that all you ever watch. This used to be a variety gaming podcast. <laughs> Feels now bad, just, man. Now it's just Overwatch. Just and like that one guy. Had that one guy. He always complains about the uh, the co-optional podcast. <laughs> it's always about Overwatch. <laughs> it always it's is. So. Yeah, it's ogre now. Oh, until right. next episode, we talk about Overwatch. Yeah, we probably will. The, so, the Overwatch episode. So yeah. I've I've been playing a lot of stuff this week. So I'll oh, just God. quickly say I've been playing Evolve, which has recently gone free to play. PVK two, which I told you about before, um, Tony, when we were talking about For Honor. I said the game yeah. looked very similar. Yeah. But this is kind of more of a. That was the E three one, right? Yeah. Yeah, that looked awful. But it's kind of <laughs> it's it's like a it's like a three person um, medieval combat ish system, kind of similar oh, to. Yeah. Um, it looked quite good. What, I thought, For Honor. But... Okay. Yeah, well, you you were interested in For Honor, were you, Toby? I was interested in For Honor, but it was yeah, like I was a PS4 Honor. exclusive. So, I, yeah, that's was important. it a PS4 exclusive? I don't know. That's not why I'm not interested in For Honor. I just don't know those kinds of games. To be I just, oh, it is coming to PC. Okay. Yeah, I mean, if it gets people interested in the game. So I played Evolve, PvK2, Chivalry, Deadliest Warrior, which is like PvK2 on drugs, because there's yeah. like. Pirates, Vikings, Samurais, Ninjas. Yeah, it's uh, ridiculous. There's like six different factions that you can all play against each other. Space Pirates? No, oh. just like different heroes from different eras fighting each other. There's normal chivalry as well. Uh, I've been... How do I play Cod Soldier? Hmm? How do I play Cod Soldier? So Soldier 76. Yeah, Cod Soldier. It's not in the game. No. Uh, we've been <laughs> Overwatch, of course, but we've already talked enough Overwatch. about Overwatch. Some say Overwatch. So I won't say anything about that. We should talk for 45 that. minutes about Overwatch. And uh, I also played the no. first episode of Life is Strange. Oh, you um, loved it. I was... Because it went free to play. Yay. Time. I don't know whether that was like... Well, the first episode. free to play, or if that's it was only for a certain period of time, because I saw they said they're putting it up for free on Steam, but I don't know if mm. that was like just for like a weekend. I think they're giving the episode away again. for free forever. Yeah, I mean that makes sense, right? If you're doing it's something a periodic like that for episodic game, when I first bought the Telltale um, Back to the Future game, right, mm. I literally thought I was just buying one Telltale game that was the Back to the Future one, and then when the second one came, I was like, I might go buy that because I like the first one. And it was automatically added to my library, and I was like, oh, I didn't realize I bought like a season pass with this or whatever. Mm. Um, and that, I think for those kinds of games, it's actually a it's a really good way to actually get people into them. Say, here's the first one for free. It's now do you want to rest? Great, a great yeah. for so of if you guys great, are wondering. Great for oh, development God. as well. If you guys are wondering about, you know, kooky life is strange. Don't get it. It's garbage. <laughs> it's absolute garbage. <laughs> However, it is um, free. You can try it for yourself. Yeah, yeah, you can try. I played it in a day. Um, maybe I was trying too hard to just get to the end of it because it was no, so you bad. Just, it's, <laughs> too, it's too <laughs> anime. <laughs> It's it's literally the story of a girl who even admits she's a hipster, and she's, <laughs> she's talking through like obscure internet references and stuff, and she's she finds out she has the ability to turn back time, slightly by putting a hand out, and she like it happens within the first couple of seconds. Sorry, this sounds so like it's not really a spoiler. Was there not like a game that came out recently as a PS4 exclusive that was like, oh, there's this accident, and it had like. I don't know uh, Norman Reedus, but the other guy in it 
that looked they had, like they had Lil Finger in it. It's an Xbox exclusive. Yeah, that's right. What was oh, it called? Was it like, like Time Breakers or something? or something? Damn, someone will know. <laughs> yeah. we, I think everyone Our knows what we're exists. talking about. Yeah, I'm going to find out. So, um, on Life is Strange, basically you're like a photography student in a school and you're kind of... Uh, you're, you, you have to hand in this photo to your teacher. He's like a very well-known art guy and you're trying to impress him. You're, you're, you're like a... A teenage angsty hipster art girl who's just Quantum trying to break. make friends at her school. But uh, basically, basically, you go to the bathroom and um, you witness. What? Hold on! Don't leave that there. Please finish the sentence. <laughs> That's the end. You're gonna have to play <laughs> the episode play one two of but Life is Strange to find out. Well, you basically you see someone getting shot, and uh, what in your school? Yeah. Someone comes to school, you hear some over talk about some drugs or some guns, and then someone gets shot, and you're like, "Oh shit!" And then you wake up, and you're like, "Oh, wait a minute, I've I've seen all this before." And then she realizes she has the ability to change back time, so she's kind of going through this school trying to figure out how to stop this from happening. And then you realize that you can have conversations with people, and then they're like, "And you're like, oh yeah, do a sick ollie on your skateboard, and you're like you're such a poser. You would have asked me to do a nose grind, and then you go." Bloop, bloop. Go back in time. It's like, yeah, do a nose grind. It's like, whoa, you're not a poser, dude. You know about skateboards. <laughs> and it's just, oh, it's so boring. I wanted to just die. I don't think that there are any time travel games that can really be good like that. If you like, there's a few games that have managed to do that well. There's so I think, do you remember the time shift? You know, like, way back when? No. no. Oh, okay. <laughs> what's time shift? What's time shift? It's um, it's a it's a first person shooter from like. Mid or PS3's life? It's you an don't 18, mean time shift, you mean it, something else. Uh, is it set like in the Nazi era kind of thing? Uh, no, it's set, okay, okay. It, it, this one, time shift is set in the future, but this guy goes back in time. He steals like a, a, an experimental time suit, but less experimental than you get given to go after him. He goes back in time and makes a regime where he's the dictator, basically. Yeah, I, th- right. I don't think that was called time shift, though, was it? I'm pretty sure it's called time shift. I'm looking at it right now. Oh, okay. That's a completely different game to what I was thinking. I'm gonna find yeah. a different one which is sort of similar to that. <laughs> but every, it's it's like a uh, heavily you, based. You, sorry. Oh, oh. I'm you trying to talk about one? life is strange, Tony. Yeah. But you already stop just... getting sidetracked. Come on. <laughs> I haven't not finished. Um, I'm sorry. It basically, it's it's a very story driven game, similar to like The Walking Dead. You know, Telltale. It's not made by the Telltale you, people. You don't like those the, type of games, do you? I'm not a big fan, but I. I, I like the look of some of them because they have interesting universe like the Borderlands one and the Walking yeah, Dead one yeah. look interesting but this mm. one didn't really grab me and the strangest thing is it's like I'm going to stop I'm going to get this guy to draw a picture of my face and it's like oh okay and it's like I will remember that action it's like <laughs> this action will have consequences like what? it's like why does that have consequences? <laughs> it's like now nah, it's going to irrevocably change the story now forever <laughs> and um you have to buy all the other episodes to see how that yeah, works. Yeah, it's like, I'm never going to find out what this action has consequences for unless I buy the other episodes. And it's like, this game is clearly made to, you know, get you to play through the whole story and put have the whole yeah. experience. But, yeah, I thought I'd try it out um, just to see what it was like. So I know there's a bit of hype around it, but I thought it was garbage. Um, straight up. Uh, the story wasn't that interesting kind of more of a teenage angsty I think younger kids will probably enjoy it uh, if you're like I don't know teenager or someone close to a teenager then if you love anime it's for you yeah if you love bullshit anime stories uh, <laughs> maybe it'll be good for you um, but yeah I really just didn't find that interesting I have not played it but I have downloaded it and intend to well, you can see well, if get, you get back to us on that. Because <laughs> yeah. I thought it was really boring. If you come back in two weeks' time saying that you've bought the whole but series. I finished it just for you guys. I want you to know that. I forced myself to finish that. Oh, game. you finished the whole episode just for. I finished this. the whole episode just so Jesus. I could say it was garbage. Wow. Like, you kind of just. Alright, okay. You- where would you have, okay, where would you have stopped if you di- weren't doing that then? Like, what was the point where you're like, no, I'm putting this down? Was that uh, a question? Kind of when I'm walking around my dormitory and just looking at different things and having this teenager monologue them like, oh, 
This girl is so pretty. I'll never be as pretty as her. Oh, my guitar. I used to play guitar, but I don't <laughs> have enough time for guitar now. And it's like this point and click shit that I really just don't want to be here. And yeah, Life is Strange. I thought I'd get the worst game out first. Um, wow. But also been playing. Um, I want to talk about PGK2 because. Um, not a lot of people play it anymore. It's kind of died down a bit. But it was originally a Half-Life 2 mod. Um, there was PVK 1. And then they kind of released the standalone game, PVK uh, 2. So you don't even have to own Half-Life 2 anymore. It's its own standalone game. And they've made like this three-person um, combat system where you're kind of all fighting for each other. So the, 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 uh, the map that most people play on is called Booty. So I'll kind of just um, explain that. So you have the knights, which have the their classes, um, the knight, the archer, and burrito man, as I'll call him. A the lot of the classes man. are really weirdly racist. <laughs> okay. <gasps> singularity, it was called. Cool. Yeah, I was going to say, is it singularity? The other um, game you're thinking of. And yeah, it's not. It's not, one... it's not Nazi. It's it's like Russian um, Cold yeah. War. There's this. There's this. Back w- in the podcast now. There's this <laughs> one guy who's like uh, on the knights team. He's kind of like a. What the hell? We got an invader. Andy, get out of here. The recording. Oh my god, you've ruined everything, Andy. <laughs> get starting, Andy. Well, they can't hear him because he's not recording audio. Oh, okay. <laughs> right. Well, that was interesting. Don't worry, edit that out and post. With the constant Discord notifications now. Um. Anyway, back to what I was saying. You need to edit Andy in to the podcast. <laughs> yeah, I was talking about PVK too. So I was talking about the map. Um, right. I was talking about the knights, and um, I was saying kind of w- weirdly stereotypical, right? There was kind of like a Mexican guy who has a spear, and he goes, he's like talking like, "Hey, I say, I'm gonna kill you." And then his abilities, what I can only describe as farting burrito <laughs> gas, where he kind of just farts out green gas that makes him run really fast and kills everyone. I'm like, he was he was like a later character added because the, he wasn't in the original game. From the Edo period, I believe. The Edo period? Yeah, of Nobunaga in Japan. They deployed people who would fart burritos. And okay. Them. Yeah, but that's the night <laughs> faction. The night factions ten have the castle and they hold the treasure chests. And um, uh, the pirates and the vikings are two separate factions and they're both trying to... Uh, uh, get the chest from the knights. So the knights have a countdown timer, and your objective is to get the countdown timer to zero. So the knights have an even longer one because they start with all six chests, and then the Vikings and the pirates have to go and attack them and take the chests. So you kind of have this combat system that's quite interesting because you have you're fighting against the knights as like the pirates, but you're fighting against the Vikings as well, and the Vikings are fighting against the knights and the pirates, and you kind of have to semi work together against with your enemies to make sure one faction doesn't win, sort of thing. And it's quite interesting. Okay, that definitely sounds like that trailer from E3. For Honor. Yeah. That's why. Just, I, that's why I said when I when like I said that. for when I um. You saw the trailer. Yeah, when I saw the trailer, I was like, "This looks like PVK 2 Yeah. Just a bit more polished. Well, it's an old Half Life Two mod. Yeah. So, it's now a standalone game. So if you want to play it, it's literally free to play. Um, oh, right. You do not need to own Half Life Two anymore because it's own standalone game. Um, they don't have any transactions in it. There's no microtransactions or anything. It's literally free to play for the love of it. That's good. They just support it at, off their own back. You might be able to donate to them somehow, but yeah. I will throw them a banner. Uh, so another game I was playing recently as well. Uh, another was, one. Uh, well, I played Chivalry Deadliest Warrior because I was kind of playing this with my friend Matt, who was on the podcast last week. Uh, yes. In the ring, out the ring, the wrestling guy. Um, but we kind of went on shivery for a little bit because um, there's not a lot of people playing on PvK2 there's quite a few populated servers but there's kind of some hardcore dedicated fans um, to PvK2 so you'll have servers of like island um, booty with like 30 people on and then some will just be like dead empty so it depends what kind of stuff you want. There's there's lots of different maps and there's lots of different um game modes and there's lots of different classes with different abilities so check it out um, 
it's really fun but I was playing on Chivalry because it's more of a Chivalry is kind of more of a polished experience of what PVK2 is because it that was a Half-Life 2 mod as well not many people know that but it used to be a uh, Half-Life 2 a lot of the games that I play used to be Half-Life 2 mods I think everything you play is Half-Life 2 in, in some way at some point because if you have Half-Life 2 you have the ability to have mods mm, and therefore you don't need money that's basically <laughs> why so many of these games do success. It's like a captured audience. My dad well, bought so me Half Life Two. Source well, is Val free. I have all these. Va yeah, exactly. Valve is the Half Life Two mod or Half the Half Life mod game company. Mm. Yeah. It's like Ca Counter Strike, Just Left for Dead, <laughs> Portal, all mods taken from. Well, not quite. Not back no, from the drop. drop was yeah. Different. Was a like a test project yeah. by Kim Swift. It's close. Who went on to make um, Quantum Break. She left. Quantum Break, the thing we literally just talked about. No, um, that's the time control thing. Oh, you mean the one with like, um, oh, what's his name? Quantum Conundrum. Quantum Conundrum. Yeah, not yeah Quantum sorry. Break. That's the one we talked about. Quantum Conundrum's the one with uh, John Delance. Yeah, yeah, from uh, Star Trek. Yeah, or My Little Pony, depending. Well, Star Trek. He's, he's yeah, cute. Once per podcast. I really yeah, enjoyed that game. I don't think it got good reviews. No, it no, had a quite yeah. an uninteresting story, but it, the it gameplay seemed... mechanics were really fun. Yeah, I completed yeah. it I didn't. not that long I ago. Got, I got to a certain point where I got kind of stuck. I was like, I don't have I did the that, will and to I go stopped, on with it anymore. I stopped playing the game, and then I came back and I finished it, and that. I enjoyed it. I should finish this game. It, it is it's really a cool fun. little physics puzzle. You know, you, you know it's like, you, you can tell it's made by Kim Swift, because you know, you've got your physics... Uh, uh, puzzles, first person platforming in there. So you got your story, yeah. even if it's arguably well, not it's, very good. Well, I don't think. I, I, well, Kim made not back to the drop. I don't think she really Tangent. made the story of Portal. No, I she guess had, she had I the guess. whole team of Valve. So. Yeah, but it's definitely a good game. I check it out. Very positive reviews. So yeah. Uh, but I was talking about chivalry actually. So I want to put a tangent. Um, so I was playing Deadliest Warrior, which is the kind of game that I think you might get get it with Chivalry. So Chivalry was originally a Half-Life 2 mod. It went into a standalone game that you could purchase. They didn't go for the uh, free-to-play game route, which is fair enough. They wanted to make money. And it is a more polished experience because they've got the money for the game development. But um, you kind of have this um, medieval combat. It's, it's more advanced than uh, what PvK2 was. You kind of have like attacking overhead or attacking like a jab for more reach or um, blocking and um, dodging. The ninjas have like a dodging um, they're, they're one of the few classes you can actually like dodge out of the way. They do like a combat roll. Combat roll sort of thing. Yeah. yeah okay. um, you're playing Pokemon K. Okay? No! Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> like that. He's catching a spear. Right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. But um, yeah. I was playing the Deadliest Warriors, which I think may come with the game now, but you might have to buy it separately. I don't know. I think it came with my game for some reason, or I bought a bundle. One of the two. Look it up, kids, if you're interested. <laughs> Look it up, Chivalry. kids. If you're interested, Look it up. If you... we're not an information podcast. <laughs> uh, not here for you. If you're interested kids. in like an advanced medieval combat system that's not shit like Skyrim, then I just said um, a few years ago that that would have been the stupidest thing you could have ever said. If you're interested in an advanced medieval combat system, it's like, what the hell is this guy on about? It's, that's just the way that games have changed. He's mm. no longer interested in the latest sci-fi or World War Three. No, there's so many well, games Well, World War's like coming that. back. Well, that's the thing. The old World Wars are. That's the thing. The proper World well, Wars. Well, World World yeah, War. well, Balfour won a sexist, so... <laughs> Is yeah, it sexist, or there was is it someone. So some, some, there's some, a some clickbait article. Yeah, they made, they said Battlefield One was sexist because um, uh, there's you can't play as women in multiplayer because there was no accurate. woman soldier in <laughs> World War One. Yeah. Um. But uh, you could in call, you could in progressive games like Call of Duty uh, Ghosts. Yeah, but isn't that more in the future though? Probably. Are they all in the future now? I've lost track. I think, yeah, the, ne well, the next one coming out definitely is in the future. I don't know if Ghost <gasps> is in the future. What? <laughs> What's that? It's a, it's a ride Don, I think. Oh, okay. <laughs> need around nearby as well. Uh, you'll be happy to know the Spiro Court are just called Toby. Can you put your phone away while the podcast <laughs> Why? is on? No, not like there's a ride on nearby. <laughs> You don't even play Pokemon Go. I do, look, I'm level 8. I'm really good. I went for like a two hour walk yesterday to find a Pikachu and we still didn't find it. 
Yeah, but Chivalry Deadly Warriors, you have a bunch of different... So if you're interested in advanced medieval combat and with a bunch of different uh, classes, there's even like a really advanced training mode, which I found really useful. It teaches you blocking and shows a damage graph numbers of where you're slashing and start stuff. So It's like... Um, oh... I can't remember what it's called. There used to be a website for like TF2 that would tell you all of the very specific details about the rockets and how like their damage drop the off. The TF2 wiki. No, it wasn't the wiki. <laughs> for the wiki. Oh, Not the like, wiki. Uh, all the oversheet, for example, that tells you all the damage numbers of Overwatch because Overwatch. Well, this sort of thing is built into the something. game, similar to like a training mode. Oh right, okay, okay. That's what I'm talking about. You kind of had like target practice and uh, practice dueling and blocking and damaging. Which is really nice because it is quite a complicated game if you've never played like Dueling. advanced medi. Yeah, you can duel like an NPC one v one. He'll block. And oh, this is not like you. a children's one v one here, my RL. No, people will fight you in this. You will get fucked. So one of my favorite parts about the game is how fucking brutal it is. So it's it like it's just like oh, I accidentally didn't block him. There goes my head. <laughs> Cut <laughs> off. Fuck. And it's like um, oh hello, just gonna cut off your legs and now you have to try and crawl across the floor and try and fight me with <laughs> no legs like the black knight from Monty Python you haven't seen enough Python to know who the black knight is yeah I do tis but a scratch he's from the holy grail oh he <laughs> fights the bunny rabbit and gets fucked no that's a bit is it? Yeah, the Black Knight is the one that's uh, guarding the way, and he basically has all of his limbs cut off, and he still wants to fight. That's the Black Knight. Yeah, no, but no, I'll keep fighting. It's bunny, just a flesh wound. Yeah, the, yeah. the bunny rabbit is very far in, into the film when they run yeah. away. There's a lot of Black Knight. Totally there's a lot of um, there's a lot of Monty Python references in PVK two because he had the knight class. Yeah, right. yeah. praise praise be Python, praise be Python. Because he's like uh, my favorite line is he goes, "I fear I've sprung a leak." <laughs> <laughs> That's one of my favourites. <laughs> but uh, also this week I've been playing Evolve, which has just recently gone free to play, and I will talk about later because we are talking about free to play games uh, later on in the podcast. But I'll move it on to a topic that everyone can talk about, which is board games, which only Dan can talk about. That was a dumb segue. <laughs> Here's something everyone can talk about. Here's something Dan can talk about. <laughs> I thought we were going straight to Rocket League, yeah. but... Let's go straight to Rocket League. No, let's not. Let's not, Dan. What Dan, is... Dan, come on, go for a bit. That's, what's Caracassone or whatever? Caracassone? I don't know. Caracassone. I've never you... played this board game. So oh, game you're selling it to both of us, then. All right. No, yes. So, uh, Joe hasn't played this one. Either. This one's called Carcassonne, which is actually based in uh, a region in France, which is like a, a walled castle city. Okay. Um, and... The way it works is incredibly simple. It works almost like a jigsaw. And I'll go into a slight tangent on this because it actually came up at a wedding I was at on Friday with my friends. Um, so Carcassonne starts, and um, there are like, I, I want to say, 15 tiles that have a river on it. And the river starts at the source, and then a little bit of river shoots off out of one side of the tile. You put that tile down, then you just pick from the next river tile. Right. That river tile will have a bit of river coming into one side of the tile and going out of the other. And you slowly build up, just everyone takes it in turns and they just they place the river and eventually the whole river is made. Okay. Once that, that is done, the actual game kind of starts. So everybody's given something like nine meeples, I think it's ten meeples. And meeples are like little counters, they essentially are like little people counters that represent who, who you are and where you are trying to score points. And then, from the rest of the upside down tiles, each person takes it in turns, they pick a tile, they look at the tile, they place the tile, and that's it. Uh, they, they, they choose if they want to put a meeple on that tile. And the tile has to make logical sense based on what is on the card art. So Joe's having a look at a picture now so we can understand. It's also a town in France. Yeah, it is. It's, 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 like I said, that's what it's based on. So you see there's a piece of castle, for example, on one yeah. of the tiles. Right. Um, so if I want to build uh, my new piece, which also has a castle on it, then I have to make sure that's connected to a bit that makes logical sense. Mm. Now, the way you score points is by placing your meeples on these little bits of either completed or uncompleted castles. And each time something gets completed, you get points amounting to certain amounts of things that work. So each castle is worth two points per piece in that castle. Each road uh, is worth one point per, or two points per road, which is um, connected between two villages. A monastery, if you 
um, place a meeple on the monastery and someone builds all around it is worth nine points. Um, and it goes on like that. And there are a few variations of, uh, of which you can play the rules. And it's a super simple game. And it, it's what is a very good game for introducing people to it, uh, to board games. Because it's, it's, it's something that's almost so... Um, unanimously accepted as like basically dominoes, right? Mm. You put things down, you put meatballs. And I was, I was going to ask if it's like dominoes when you were talking about the river bar. It is a little bit bar. like dominoes, yeah. Um, but with point scoring. And at the end of point the game... Score- well, technically dominoes has point scoring as well, but it has. I feel like there's more decisions in this than dominoes. Yeah, I'd, I'd say mm. so. More creativity. I mean, I don't think I've ever actually played a game of dominoes where we scored points. Properly, I'm pretty sure if, no. we, if we've ever had a game of dominoes, it's either been set them up and knock them down, or just place them. It's like, yay, we did dominoes. I think we almost played this game, and then we played Sheriff of Nottingham. Probably, yeah. Carcassonne's really simple. So, there are a few sort of strategies to this. For example, you only have a certain number of meeples, so if you don't have any meeples left, you can't place them down on mm. potentially better spots. Yeah. Um, if two people are in the same castle, which can happen... Um, by building like two pieces which originally don't touch each other but then do because other people have placed tiles down um, the person with the most meeples in that territory can kick the other person out so that person may have been sat there and in fact started it from the entire game and doesn't gain any points from it at the end of the game you get points based on almost completed things so you still get points based on um, if you were a meeple in a castle and it has like three bits of castle you still get some points it's not like it's just over and then you just count up your points at the end, and the person with the most points is the winner. And it's that simple. Hmm. Carcassonne is really simple, it's really easy to play, um, and the wedding story comes from, rather than just having a standard guest book to sign at the wedding, I was at on Friday, they gave everyone a Carcassonne tile, and they turned that into a guest book. So you signed the Carcassonne tile, put it somewhere it made sense, and that slowly built the guest book, which was quite a nice touch, I thought. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Very, hmm. very easy. Tony, but, what do you think of Carcassonne, then? It sounds amazing, actually. It sounds like, like thematically there. and like a mechanic, like really good. Yeah, it's really simple. There's a few like rules. Like When you build the river, you can only um, make the river flow down. You can't turn yeah, back yeah, yeah, on yeah. yourself, for example, because otherwise the game doesn't work. Well, you'd, are, you'd have a loop, couldn't you, and this wouldn't work. Yeah, exactly. So you, you can't loop things. You can um, only... Um, the amount of times you try and put something down and then realise it doesn't make sense is quite frequent. Um, there are certain tiles that are worth more. So, for example, if you have a castle tile, it's worth two points if you add it to the castle. But some of those castles have um, shields on them, which means they're worth double the points. So you can decide mm. to put those somewhere new rather than adding it to an existing castle someone else might muscle in on. There's extra games you can play. So like there's actually like little gardens which appear on some of the tiles and you can add extra meeples to the game to actually make it so that they'll do more and there are a lot more expansions to it but we've only really paid, played with the basic set to start with that's Carcassonne it's really simple really nice really easy easy peasy Ta-da. yeah that's this week's board game Tony do I'm you like Carcassonne? I can't say I have experience but looking at the Tinder page of Carcassonne yes the I Tinder, swipe Tinder page of Carcassonne <laughs> I had a swipe and you were like mm, yeah. <laughs> I like that as a uh, analogy oh, God. on the spot analogies don't always work greatest but sometimes they're okay so have you been sold on the board game Tony yes I, I think I definitely have I will definitely uh, hang on wait okay one thing I think we forgot last time we did this how expensive is it Carcassonne's dirt cheap Let's okay. do a quick Google, but um, it's it's usually very cheap. It's um because it's it's lots of little pieces of just like printed. Yeah, card. I I'm um, really interested in this actually. I'm actually willing, like willing to buy this myself. Oh, no, it's not pounds. cheap. It's it's forty four ninety nine. That's that seems silly. that's still no, that's still decent. No, it's not. No, it's really not. You can get that a lot cheaper. I bet if you looked on like eBay, you could find. Okay, how how cheap would you set would you set it at then? I yeah. would have sold that game for like twenty eight pounds ninety nine, maybe. Uh, 30? And even that's Can we call quite, it thirty. Yeah, thirty pounds. Because let's be honest, no, I, no, more games specific. are overly expensive. Twenty nine pounds is too much, but twenty eight ninety nine I'd be willing to pay. The expansion packs are around twenty pounds by the looks of it. Yeah, it's because it's such a popular game that they basically right. know they can get um, charged for it and I'm pretty sure they sold the rights to Carcassonne as well which means you get like um, Star Wars Carcassonne now or you can get I don't know what's popular these days Bratz Carcassonne Bratz Bratz is Seems still you can get popular, it for right? about 
23 pounds yeah that's the okay so that's the simple edition so that's the cheap one that's good mm. that's exactly what i would consider paying so look if you look yeah look down there so you've got star wars carcassonne uh is there south seas no that's an expansion oh it's just these are just yeah like how okay how, what do the expansions add then just more interesting um, so they are different tiles. I believe there are different Inns meeples and you can add, which traders will and builders. stop you from building um, on certain things. Okay. Like I said, I haven't played with them, but it's a game that you starts have, off so cathedrals, simple. Didn't we? Um, oh, no, I don't think so. We haven't played with it at least. But I, I want. It's a Klaus Jürgen. Uh, oh, I can't remember the guy's last Klaus name. Jürgen. Klaus Jürgen. Klaus Jürgen something or other is, is is the guy that made the game, and it's really good. Okay. Tony? Yep. Would Back buy. To you. Expensive. Would buy. Would ten buy. Out of ten. Would buy. It's on Toby's board game wish list. And, I, and the expansions are interesting as well, so that's also a plus. Cool. A lot, a lot of the ones no, are like, oh yeah, the expansions like and then, but no, it's okay. actually interesting expansions. So we're going on to Toby's favourite game, Rocket League. Um, My favourite is game. One of, another game that I've never played. So um, they're adding microtransactions are coming to Rocket League, and they're adding a similar system to like TF2 or CS:GO, where they're having the crate and key system. I think this is dumb. Yeah, I think this is really dumb too. So we all agree it's dumb because yeah, you already have to pay it. for the game. Yeah, it's not just that, right? They added DLC, and I was happy to pay for it. Yeah, yeah. I, cars, I was fine with the DLC. Like, yeah, that's cool. If I want the Batmobile or I want the Back to the Future DeLorean, I love both of those series. I will buy those. But if you are now basically saying. Hey, would, do you want to get some cool hats? I'm like, um, no, I don't. Why is this in this game? Why are you constantly trying to push these on me? Now, I, to be fair, I'm pretty sure they have said on this, mm. if you want, you can turn the whole thing off. You can you hide can just it. say, don't want to yeah, get crates. They, they have said um, you can actually hide the whole thing through yeah. a simple checkbox in the Which, options. to me, is, is good, right? They must have understood that people are just going to not be interested in this and say, I don't want to find crates. Mm. I literally just want to find hats because I love hats because I'm a weird TF2 psycho. So they're going, they're going with crates will contain cosmetic items only. So they're selling nothing. They'll give you an advantage. And I mean, to be fair, to what else would they have done? I mean, there's not currently anything you can More buy. More powerful like cars. I've given him an extra one scale mile per hour. Check <laughs> it out. <laughs> oh, I'm going to win you all. I think no, you, you game... just pay for a goal. Like a, you pay to get a goal instantly. <laughs> I think for a game where the entire point of it is kind of to keep playing and grind for toppers and um, antennas and sort of stuff, don't really see the point of giving people uh, boxes to open and get cosmetic items that you're playing it for in the first place, which is why I don't really understand the crate system in uh, Overwatch. Um, I don't think it was needed at all. The, the crate system is fine, right? For um, being able to buy crates and also being to gain them whilst level up in Overwatch, I'm perfectly fine. I've spent a lot of money on crates in Overwatch. I'm kind of ashamed. No, but I mean buying crates with real money. Yeah, no, I'm fine I think with that's that because I have spent a lot of money on that in Overwatch because I like the characters so much. Like I saved up a um, thousand gold, like from the actual in-game currency for when Anna came out, so I could buy one of her legendary skins right off the bat. But before that, when I saw how cool the characters, were, I was like, oh, that's a really cool scene. I want that, and I've I've spent like probably by this point more than a hundred pounds on um, Overwatch crates because it's wow. just there's something satisfying about the sitting skin there insanity and going, <laughs> like Daniel. Oh. it has it was the same with um, not quite as bad with me but when we used to play lots of um, awesome knots Bradley basically had to have every single mm. awesome knot skin whenever they came out it was like right by now and he just had mm. all of them so Overwatch I think the only so games I've ever put my transactions into is uh, Hearthstone yeah, and How League, about League of Legends. Well, yeah, but that was <laughs> years ago. Wait, what? <laughs> I was addicted to Habbo Hotel, and I uh, bought a uh, lot. I had, to had the best furniture for my suite because I was married, <laughs> and I needed my wife to have a good sofa. She just needed a good quarter. When I was wife. like, you know, ten or something. So and your wife was probably actually a forty-eight-year-old man. Yeah. Well, yeah, we don't talk about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm banned from Habbo Hotel now because I spent so much money on. On how, sofas. How much did he spend? Three pounds. It was a at the time, considering he basically had to just send a text from a mobile phone. Yeah, that's one thing <laughs> that these oh, these microtransactions do. It was just like they made it really easy for me to because I didn't have a credit card at the time. So one of the way they did it was you could buy 
membership with SMS messages. Yep. So I didn't understand really that it was just charging it to my dad's credit card who paid for the phone. Mm. That is what the whole point of apps really taking off. Yeah. Is billing on behalf of. It's just a case Stupid of, children. Yeah, there you go. Oh, look, poker coins. Nine million of these, please. You're like, oh, what do you mean that costs real money? Like, it's easy for me to say, oh, I don't buy my transactions anymore because I'm in well informed. But I definitely did when I was yeah. a kid, and that's really scary. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Dark, you dark know, times. It's, e it's easy for one man with a bold head to come along and promise me things <laughs> about the Connect <laughs> and Project Milo and to buy say, it. I wanted it to be real but it wasn't you were going to have a nice conversation with I that wanted boy. to meet Milo and he said I want to bring <laughs> no. I want to bring Peter onto the podcast my first question will be Peter where, where is, is Project Milo and what did you ever believe that you could actually create <laughs> artificial intelligence on the Connect yeah and the answer, oh, I don't want to overpromise anything, or I don't think I've overpromised anything. We did I have it. I was reading it. an we interview with Peter actually, um, where he's, people were criticising about curiosity, what's inside the cube, where he kind of had that cube social experiment thing. It's just a social and experiment. They were like, you're overpromising things. And he's like, I, I, I never overpromise things I believe in. <laughs> I will not take back the hype for the cube. <laughs> And then he did not promise on the reward of the cube. So then uh, too many heroes had to take it up and give the guy who won the uh, award his own character in the yeah. game, which is quite nice of them. Because um, we, we looked up to, um, I think it's too, too many heroes. Um. Is it too many heroes or is it... I felt like it wasn't quite that, but it's something like that. Yeah. Hang on, I'll be on... Um, it's on, Steam. It's on my wish list, isn't it? Did you put it on their recent? Oh, not a hero. Sorry. Yeah, something like this. Is it my top one at the moment? Isn't it? Yeah, it's near the top. I'm on the page now. It's a really funny game. Yeah. What? It, what? It's the fun. It's one of the funniest trailers I've ever seen. There's a. There's a bunny that's travelled back in time and has made himself the mayor and to prove he gets results he's hired a bunch of citizens to go and beat up some mob bosses. Some really stereotypical xenophobic mob bosses. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's like um it's like a cover based like side scrolling Miami. It's made Hotline by Miami um, it's yeah, it's pu it's published by Developer Digital, so it's quite similar to like Hotline Miami. Yeah. It looks very Mook Pixel. That's very weird game. It's quite fun. Yeah, there's some quite funny dialogue on the gameplay. Looks really good, and from the reviews that I've seen. Well, that was a this is a weird trailer. Why is Tom Jones in a mecca? Because this woman is from Wales. <laughs> Jesus. One, one of her she has like special abilities. Like she can knock down doors. Um, can use guns, and it's like is Welsh. <laughs> Yeah, that is definitely a, a character. You're gonna trait. shit stuff through your tear ducts. This I mean, game is so good. If we skipped already to Toby's wish list and we picked that, that would already be on my <laughs> wish list because that's amazing. I, oh, no we can idea. Is it that? No idea that game existed before now. But what was I talking about? <laughs> Microtransactions? Microtransactions have over yeah, but, a Oh, yeah, okay. So, how did we get Peter Molyneux did it. It was all Peter. It was Peter. <laughs> Damn it, Peter. Not again. Yeah. You're pulling my strings. Uh, but yeah, what I was saying is, is I don't like microtransactions, especially in mobile games. Where it's really easy to, you know. Yeah. You don't even have to like, put it in multiple is... times. You just play, put it in once and get okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. That's the thing. Mm. That if you, if I physically had to get my credit card out literally every time I wanted to buy things, you wouldn't on, do it. Uh, Overwatch, I'd be like, oh, my credit card is literally over there. I'm not doing that but because it's got it saved. And I just need to type in my password. Yeah. It's a case of oh, this is it is. It's fine. It's no real money. I consider it already gone. And then you're like, oh, mm. I just spent so much money. But then, you, but then you fill it back up and go, oh, it's even more money already gone. Yeah. It's just an endless cycle. Yep. But one thing I will say about Rocket League, they have given you the option to completely hide this feature, purely cosmetic, and all funds from this are going to fund esports events. Yeah, I'm okay with that, to be honest. I mean, it's the almost CSGO like in its like. Yeah, where they have like. Um, Dota as well, where they sell banners. International. And, yeah, those kind of stuff. stuff. Like, we'll, we'll, we'll contribute towards it. Don't get me wrong, Valve are making a crap ton on that, right? They're not, yeah, but Dota 2 is a free to play game. Yeah, but at the same time. 
they're making a lot of money yeah. on that, right? So when they do like the international, for example, they go buy all these things, and then they slowly like crowdfund like there's this twenty million prize pot of which we contributed ten percent of everything, which means that we've got like you know ninety million from all this, mm. and then everyone completely ignores that fact. But yeah, I'm okay with what Rocket League have done to be honest. I mean, it's it's dumb because they doesn't need to have microtransactions, but if it's capable of just being hidden completely, then I don't care because I literally never see it. They they say they're still going to release DLC. Exactly, like and they've the to be they to are. their credit, they have released free DLC for tons of people. Like ice hockey, right? Is a completely they are, different game mode. They had it for free. Hoops, mm. completely different for free. They they are still going to support free new arenas, modes, yeah. and items. So so it's been, we're still know. being supported. The game, it's not. Um, yeah, I, I still think Rocket League's a good game. I don't think this feature was really needed, no. but it's being done in a non scumbag way. So. I'm going to give yeah. Psionics. props to Psionics. Yeah, for that. Psionics cool developer award. They get a thumbs up. That they get a thumbs up see. for doing my in the right way. Yeah. But for a game that didn't really need it in the first place, I don't really see the point. But if you're interested in that, go ahead, buy some. Cool hats. Yeah, just make sure to ask your parents' permission before you buy anything. Online. Or use or your own money. Furniture. Their <laughs> kids are not going to have any money. Yeah, they don't have money. Uh, so we'll move on to the next topic, which is Fallout 4 DLC, Far Harbor, and the Autumn Leaves controversy. We've talked about Far Harbor before, right? Yeah. Is it out now? Yeah. It's yeah. been out for a while. So Far Harbor was the one that I was the most interested in. It's the in story DLC. Whole, yeah, the one that had like massive new maps. So whatever. they've released like Far Harbors and um, Nuka World. It's like a theme park. Yeah. Um, and then they have like a bunch of uh, content add in DLC. So they've got like. Um, they've got a robot. The, you when you make your own robot, robot you've got one, one where you can Pokemon catch one. your own. Yeah, the Pokemon one. And you've got like a conveyor belt thing in your settlements as well. Pokemon Go before it was called. Yeah, you, you can build your own vault now. Yeah, vault as well. But those are vault. all the DLCs. Yeah, all the DLCs this, out now. This is probably completely irrelevant, right? But the other day I saw an amazing like Fallout 4 video about this guy that had made a conveyor belt system that like you put in scrap in one side, pull mm. a bunch of levers, and then like a made gun comes out the other and you shoot it. Right? Yeah. It looked amazing. You can do that complete, now. Complete tangent, but looked cool. Moving on. Yeah, but... um. I kind of not because originally when we talk about Fallout Four, we're talking about they just changed the season pass and they increased the price. Yeah. And said we're releasing way more content, and now they've just released this uh, the Vault Tech DLC where you can build your own vaults. So he's like, this is the final DLC, no more DLC. What, it's for, like Fallout Four. Yes, yeah. it's they've less than a like, year. They wow. released like one. Yeah, they've released like one story DLC. So they basically and I think they, they bumped the price. Well, maybe a story DLC, but. Yeah, if you so if you they, go they bump the price if you go to Steam, and two more DLCs if you go to Steam at the um, and look look at the um, oh the, the the pass, you you see everyone complaining like how how it's not worth your money and like hmm. never buying from Bethesda again like that. Just wait until it's so out until on sale. The the Nuka World is an amusement park that you can explore. It's quite I big, isn't it? There's new stories. I to go with probably it. side quests, not main quests. There's new quests, there's new raiders, weapons, creatures, so it's kind of a new part of the world, which yeah. is desperately needed. But I don't know if it'll be as expansive as Far Harbor. No, no, it definitely it's won't It's like, be. I feel like half the time when they make this stuff, right, what they're really doing beyond this now is just adding more assets for people to make mods with. Because mm. the coolest stuff. Well, that's I've fine, seen but then they can they could add more and more DLCs. They could keep keep coming. If you look up. at if you look at the no, DLC not... for Fallout Three, it was bloody amazing. Yeah, like, yeah. they made like so much good content. I was like, right, Fallout Four is going to come out. We're going to get like a Operation Anchorage where we can go back in time th through a program to Alaska and fight in the original Chinese War, and mm. we can have like a Broken Steel where you can go fight with Liberty Prime again and. That was very fight with them or you could even um, have like the pit where you find like this culture of slaves of giant machines and there was these really cool worlds contained within the Fallout 3 DLC and then with Fallout 4 you kind of just don't get that because even with the one story DLC they have Far Harbor mm. it's pretty much a complete rip off of um, Autumn Leaves a Fallout New Vegas uh, mod. I kind of feel like the reason may be because Fallout 4 is more um What's the word? It's more accessible. Like it's, tons of people had hype for Fallout Four. Yeah, from it's an e it's I a better shooter to have hype. It's right? better shooter and so, easier to get in for the consoles. 
a lot of my friends at work and who I know I like they they some of them had played Fallout 3 but not a lot of them by the time Fallout 4 came out Everybody knew about Fallout 4, including people that hadn't played Fallout 3. They just mm. knew about it somehow because it was so overhyped. And I feel like because it had reached that mass audience, they felt like they didn't need to care as much. Yeah. And put as much they they into already got enough pre Yeah, I think so. They got basically they got their money's worth out of it. We're like, eh, let's move on it's to so, the next. It's so disappointing. It's so disappointing. That's the problem though. with the people who buy Bethesda games because you're guilty of this as well, Toby. Because you will buy a Bethesda game and go, "Oh, mods will fix it." No, I, I won't so, excuse them though. Uh, yes, the mods will fix it, but it shouldn't be broken in the first place. Well, Bethesda yeah. is very good though because this is what well, very few companies do this now. It's actually bring out a creation kit that's actually like really good. Like that is what Bethesda is good at. But yeah, not making like having like really buggy messes like isn't is it still unexcusable? Mods will fix it, but it shouldn't be up to the mods to fix it. They should fix like minor problems, not ma these massive um, bug overhauls. Mm. And I don't know. I just want to give it like the contro like controversy of like ripping off like the entire story. Like, so if you look at the screenshots from um, the article on this, uh, there's literally like. Uh, picture for picture, exactly the same location and events, and the same like dialogue as well, wasn't it? And, like the yeah. same characters. That's pretty low. Yeah, they, they, and no, they no credit either. Yeah, I, I was gonna say, but they, they could have out. easily gone up to this guy and said, "We really like your mod. Would you like to come and work on Fallout yeah. Four? Or you know, we'll pay you a little bit and we'll give you um, credit. Yeah, even we'll <laughs> just give you some credit for it because I mean." It, the reason why the guy will have made that mod in the first place for free, obviously, is because he liked the game. Yeah. They just said to him, you'll be in the credits, we'll give you a bunch of swag, we'll pay for you to come out and have a look around for a bit, you okay with this? Hmm. I mean, at the same time, right, is, it'll come back to that exact same old adage, right? It's like, they own all those assets, they own the full... Yeah, they did not universe. own the, they don't own the intellectual own the, property of his well, they story. Do, they no. don't own the actual copyright reasons to his story. So, um, but, if, but if his, his story has their characters in it then no he added do. new characters to it if he physically added new characters I think I, th okay. I think he added new characters and like then he had like voice acting as well and things yeah and then they just, the same, they just like, did it, they just did it themselves exactly the same copy and paste but with their own actors mm, their yeah. own same characters but maybe renamed slightly mm. so basically both quests begin with a discussion through an int in, uh, interphone with the caretaker of the vault uh, a head weighted robot with a rather distinguishable persona, the big mandatory vault door opens even the player up for the exploration of said vault. Um, as you know, so this could be purely coincidental as vaults are common in Fallout mythology and many quests delve into the depths. Then as you walk it, uh, in the quest in Farber takes you into a room that almost looks like a remaster of the mod's location. Which one's which? Because I haven't played This is New Vegas. Us. Right. Uh, and this is Fallout Why does 4. that one look worse? <laughs> Or Fallout Four. To, yeah, that almost just like a screenshot from Bioshock as well. That's weird. Mm. Anyway, tangent. But yeah, you're basically you, 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 it's kind of like the same set pieces. You're standing on a balcony overlooking a large room, and it basically looks like they've made a HD remaster of his. Yeah, using their uh, new assets, mod. but recreating mm. what they've what you had there. And then the main quest also starts by you investigating the murder. Are checking the crime scene and speaking to every uh, robot in the vault and it's like kind of the same detective investigation story that uh, Autumn Leaves has which is really coincidental for Bethesda well that's two coincidences mm. off the list so okay it's, it is ridiculous to how similar it is like looking at the screenshots though so I was actually looking just now because I remember them saying something about um, some DLC which was coming up for Doom, which obviously Bethesda are very involved in. Well, they did multiplayer well. DLC. Right, and, and I was just thinking that maybe they pulled some members off the uh, Fallout 4 dev team to go and work on Doom. I have no idea how Bethesda's, Bethesda's like, organised, but I know that Valve do that sort of shit all the time where they like pull and say, hey look, people are doing tons of stuff to TF2, which is broken as hell at the moment, by the way. Um, and then they're just like, okay, but now there's something happening in Dota, oh, yeah. so you go over there now. And they say, they've always said, oh yeah, developers are free to go and work on whichever product they want, and uh, they can just chill out over there. But you know full well that someone's going to look after that stuff. Yeah. And the one that's earning the most money is going to be like, you pay attention to them. 
Is the ge- what's broken on TF2? So the, the gameplay. They added this thing called the Meet Your Match update. Yeah, I know the new matchmaking competitive. Competitive system. matchmaking, but not just competitive matchmaking. They've got rid of just like the equivalent of quick play servers in Overwatch, right? Oh. So when you know you used to like go into like these silly servers and just click play on like yeah. the Valve server and you'd have a good time. That's gone. And not only that, um, the matchmaking is worse than Overwatch's right now. So a guy goes into a match, he top scores, and he wins, and he manages to derank twice. Jesus. That's just that makes no sense at all. So um, it's j- it's just hilariously broken at the moment. If you want to um, see a good video covering it, there's a guy called um, Muscle K or Muselic, hmm. I think. He does a really good video on it, explaining what's currently totally messed up so- and wrong. I have seen some videos from Tyler from the Valve News Network and yeah. he talks about the frontline update. So what TF2 wants to do is they want to give the game almost to the community mm. and they've said any project that gets enough backing they will let you create basically your own expansion for the game um, you're, you're, if, if you have the backing for it. So there's, there's this frontline update at the moment which is really well made. They've given people like a million assets and it's kind of this World War Two themed um, the see, the, if you haven't seen the SFM trailer for it, go watch it because it's a work of fucking art. Uh, the guy uh, who uh, he's been working on this map, you Eek Crash, he uh, has made a map um, Shore Leave that looks really good, which yeah. is kind of like this, you know, D Day inspired map where you kind of land on the beach and then you go through this town and you kind of have to escort this payload through. Mm. It's got it's got custom models for everything, so there's like a custom. Um, model for the payload car it's like a little turret and instead of exploding when it gets to the end it fires like a shot off Mm. and then that explodes and I think if Valve was willing to just say um, you guys in the community are doing a really good job we're just going to hand over development to you which is kind of what people really want because there's a really dedicated fan base to this game Yeah. and TF2 is kind of moving away from the TF2 team is kind of moving away from development and they kind of just want to hand it over to the community if they do this I think it's going to be really positive for the game because the frontline update looks really good and they've given map makers and modelers and stuff all the assets they need to make stuff themed around this so this could be a really good idea the difficulty is that Valve still own the TF2 universe mm. they're never going to let anyone do anything with their characters that's out of universe right because that it just there's so much law steeped in TF2 that they just wouldn't do it and they couldn't possibly just say yeah we trust you you and you to go and do this um, because th- there's just too much trust placed in those three people who are outside of Valve's control at that point the second that they try and start looking like source repositories or whatever to say, okay, I'm just going to check this in and also check on Half-Life 3 over here. Oh, Half-Life 3 confirmed, that kind of stuff. It just, there'd be so many problems. They'd have to do it like the way they always said they'd want to do things via the workshops. Like, come submit this thing and then maybe you'll get added to TF2. Mm. But that flopped itself, you know? Never worked properly. They tried to do this around last year. I think it was at the end of the line. end of the line was um, an SFM film that they kind of wanted to... Everyone there was, it was a map turned into a proper like new game mode, and it'd be really amazing. And it just wasn't. It was just well, there was like a huge arguments and disagreements yeah. with Valve, and they kind of wanted to do one thing with the map, and the Valve's like, no, it needs to be this thing. And yeah, it was a huge botched community update that was supposed to happen last year. So I just I stopped playing TF2, as you know, quite a while ago. Yeah, I haven't played TF2 I in a long it, time. I turned it on once, and there was tiny people in bumper cars, and I was like. It's not like Halloween or something. The hell has happened to TF2. I just didn't get it anymore. And I realised I'd been gone away for too long. It had been too long since I played TF2 and I couldn't mm. come back to it it's, it's like coming back to an old house that you, you sold. And you come back and say, like, oh, well, they've changed up the place. I've never had that experience before, having never owned a house to sell. Well... I don't think you have either. Tony. No, but I, I can safely say... He's a property developer. He's, check, he's, <laughs> he's trying to cash checks. His mouth can't... No, so, but I have had I that experience though. I've gone back to a house which I, I've, I've lived in, and yeah, they've changed yeah, yeah. it completely. Anyway, how, we tangented onto TF2. How did this? Happen? Well, I wanted to talk about TF2 anyway because it's interesting. Thing to this update looks pretty cool with all the stuff that's going on. Like, what gets me is that TF2 has always been set in a very specific time period, right? And the fact that it is going on now to like World War one or world war two like in a weird way because it's always been a bit futuristic but at the same time not like mm. all the robots etc i think 
that's kind of cool. But it's the same thing as all other games right now. They're like going, old stuff is cool. And you're like, yeah, it is. But. You can't <laughs> overdo it. Yeah. Do, so, do your own thing. Yeah, well, uh, if, if TF2 allows this sort of uh, mod back. Yeah, to come and be part of the official uh, update and it's not botched like the end of the line one was then I think that would be a really good thing for the game I would actually really enjoy going back and playing a World War uh, inspired TF2 update so I'd reinstall the game and play it again it if would this be sort of thing neat. came out I think that would give it a it lot it would of... have to be something that was quintessentially not TF2 anymore essentially like mm. I'd need to know my FPS controls as I did for, and roughly what characters did but the game mode would have to be drastically different. Like, I think they want to add new weapons as well. See, that would be cool, because that breathes life into the game in a whole new way. Which I mean, is something you couldn't do just by making a map. You would need to you know, work with Valve. Yeah. It's... Uh, tier 2. Yeah, but... We were talking about a good game developer, Valve. Let's go back to Bethesda. <laughs> um, back to Bethesda. Yeah, because Valve are so incorruptible. <laughs> they're less the, well, they did work with Bethesda, and that corrupted them. Yeah. So that was that the reason. Who was the corruptor? <laughs> Maybe Valve got rid of their corruption and they imparted it upon Bethesda. Who knows? Who cares? Moving on. Oh. I think Machine Gun Games worked on Doom, didn't they? Uh, I don't know. Well, Machine Game. Machine Games, you mean? Machine Games did Wolfenstein. Yeah, I don't know whether they did Doom. I just I think they had some of the same developers and the music's kind of similar but I don't think they physically worked on it Machine Games didn't have a hand in it so to speak I reckon the developers must have just had the same art style kind of thing because they, they are very similar mm, games they are quite similar which is a good thing because they're, Cause they're great, great games, games yeah. but fuck you Bethesda I'm coming off this topic so I've got nothing else to say it's apart just, from it's just so don't rip people off <laughs> yeah, you, you know you, how you I stand on and you've ripped people off on two completely different ways <laughs> There's one person you've affected in a big way by just stealing all his ideas as if mm. they were your own, and then all the people that you charged for, you know, extra for, for something nothing. you haven't then delivered on. That sucks. And you're not, you're not. The only way you could make this better is to actually release more DLC that was decent, or refund those people. And you're not going to refund those people. Let's face it, you've got yeah, their money make now. More, make care. more DLC for the people who bought I'm, the season pass. I'm a hundred percent sure that. Um, now that they're allowing mods on consoles, they're going to try and open a mod store again Probably. on console, Probably. and they're going to get a bit of back. Oh, one one one. Um, Bethesda.net came out. There was loads of stuff. There's like um, a lot of people on the Nexus that like um, took their stuff down because people were copying it and putting it on there. Yeah. There was no like authentication system that there was in the Nexus. So. Which is pretty scary. Bethesda, you know, why I... why the fuck would you think you need to have authentication? You can't just have people stealing stuff and put it on your store. You, you know, I stand on paid mods. Yeah, with my we, video you, you, I want you have your five to be paid steps. Yeah, yeah, with actual money uh, instead of like uh, use the, this like again a with tiny our own cut store. of Steam wallet funds. Yeah. They need real money if you want to legitimize modding as a job. And donations can, should always be a thing as well when it comes Thursday, to modding. you could have you could have gone to this developer and said, "Do you like your mod? We want to." Make a similar version of it in Far. You, you remember, you remember in up. Skyrim, like someone made like um Fal the Falskar mod, which is like a massive like new region, mm. like mod, and like then they, they, they he wanted to get hired by Bethesda. Like it's like a like the polar opposite of that story is Bethesda just ripping off this other guy instead yeah. of a gang. This guy making this really amazing mod and then almost hiring him. Instead, it's just ripping him off, not even crediting him, and just like getting money off him. It's like the polar opposite from like what four years ago. Yeah. Well, really depressing. I have gone back and renamed our first podcast. Uh, we were talking about Fallout Four and how disappointing it was. Uh, bad Bethesda. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, I think it's quite apt. Bad Bethesda. Come on, guys, stop mucking around. <laughs> There's only five minutes left of our show. No, it's not many. JK. We're going on to the <laughs> next topic that is games that need to go free to play. So I told you earlier that I was playing Evolve and it wasn't a clever ruse that I was just going to go over it. Uh, I'm going to talk about it now because I've been playing it recently. It's gone free to play recently. So uh, yeah, Evolve went free to play 
Um, it's now changed the game to Evolve Stage 2, so they didn't literally make it free to play, give it a new name, and they've completely rebalanced the game. Uh, it's not just a uh, a different you know name. Uh, have, you, have you played Evolve nope. yet? I played it when it was in the beta, and I played it to the point where it was like, cool, the monster's really awesome, but my teammates don't know what they're doing. Then okay. when I played it as a group, I was like, okay, now we can be the monster every time. Cool. So bored now. Um, one of the things that was really hard if you were playing uh, in a non-group is that trackers were so important mm. to the game because they were the people who called down the giant dome that you fought the monster in, yeah. and they could miss that. So they could miss that, and then the monster would just get away, and there was kind of this mini game between trying to hit this dome. Now, anyone in your team can call down the dome, and that everyone has a shared cooldown, and it always hits. If you're in range of the monster, you hold down F, and it puts a giant dome around him on on the center of him. That just seems the opposite thing now. It's because if nobody is the problem. I have no... Yeah, but no, because the tracker all... still has his job. He still he still has the ability to track the they monster. All, they also made the monster... Put down traps and harpoons and stuff. They also made the monster able like... to fight in stage one and two properly as well. Yeah, okay. And then the support has like the... He has like the AoE shield by default. The assault has like a shield for himself as well. So evolved. they've rebalanced all the classes of monsters. How many monsters are involved now? Is it still like only three? No. Not there one. is... So there's there's monsters like the Goliath, and then there's variations of the monsters with slightly different abilities. So there's Are they the different enough that the gameplay is drastically different each time? Depends. Some are, some aren't. See, that's the problem. If, if Evolve had had people... Um, really playing it for a start which is actually a bigger problem because Evolve's just like oh I'm gonna get all of my people into this server it's like there are currently 12 people playing Evolved only 12 and then you were like okay we finally managed to get into a server with lots of people and we're gonna play and then it's just like I'm gonna be one of these three monsters that I've played tons of times before mm. granted there are more now but the, the Evolved monsters were I think you had to buy them as DLC I want to say, and I was going to say that unless you had like a season pass, you had to download extra ones and you had to buy them. I don't find that interesting. If it was a case of just like I'm a big monster, rah, it, it gets know, stale. I, up I, more, I think right? they've changed it as well. It's like the whole thing is much faster paced. Mm. Like mm. it's not so just you're fighting every couple of minutes. Yeah, it's a time to kill kind of thing is. So I would I would say that you'll probably be less bored. Like you can get as bored as quickly. Yeah, and is there is more more, more stuff to yeah. unlock as well. You can still play like as the monster. You never want to fight early game, but you will get domed. So you kind of have to mm. kind of try and take people out and run away and kind of evolve more mm. and try and get to your stage three. Um, one thing I liked about the game is that the uh, intro sequence. So you, I we talked about this with other games like Awesome Nauts where. When you respawn, oh, so kind of thing. when you respawn, you yeah. come down the dropship. You collect the coins. You kind of have these interesting games that you could play while you're waiting for things. While the monster's running away, um, the, each character has, the, it has a discussion with each other, and they kind of have these lore moments. That's quite funny. And there's a lot of really interesting and funny characters. There's a lot of funny writing in Evolve. Like you'll have like bug people and robots with. Uh, a healing robot that's been augmented with a demon core that's like hello I I am Emmett I'm gonna heal you hashtag fuck you <laughs> like that sort of stuff um, that gets possessed sometimes but yeah they have added more monsters now there's the Goliath, the Wraith, the Kraken uh, the Behemoth and the Gorgon the Gorgon's kind of like um, I was playing against the other day because it's the first time I played against it because you don't see the um other monsters really at low level because everyone else is free to play so they kind of only got the Gorgon which is like the tutorial character they give yeah. you but um, the, the Gorgon's kind of like a giant spider that's really interesting she has like this acid spit and she has like some of the longest CC in the game because she can throw fire spiders at you and they trap you and then they move you around mm. it's kind of like this sort of cocoon spider that picks you up I think there is actually quite a lot of variation in the monsters themselves the oh, monsters are hugely varied and well, it's free. The, Give it a go. Yeah, that's the thing. It, the, it, this is the whole topic. Is it's about things that have gotten a new lease on life by going free to play and evolve. Like I would never have considered playing evolve. Again. I may even own it. I don't actually remember, but um, I would consider playing it again now that I know that there are that many different changes to it because it needed that good word if of you, mouth to say that it's had changes. If you own it, you do get the founder pack, so you get like a bunch of the characters that were already unlocked in the game. 
and anything you unlocked by playing the game in Evolve Stage 2. And, and you get some and a bunch of money. the new currency, yeah. the silver keys, which are coins. I don't know why they're called keys. They're just like unlock like cosmetics or something, is it? The silver keys? Yeah. Um, no, you use those to buy... You can buy skins, so you use them to buy monsters, buy characters, okay, so you do buy skins monsters. and buy guns, is what you... And there are perks so as well you can get as well. Oh yeah, there's perks as well, but yeah. I found that the best thing to do is to not touch the perks, because you unlock them by levelling up the characters, so each character is a level system okay. now, um, to you know offset the free-to-play stuff, so when you level them up, you get silver keys, mm. um, you get perks by levelling them up. And you, when you get them to a certain level, they get like an epic skin sort of thing. They do reward you for mm. playing the character, which is like a free thing. You don't have to buy it or anything, which I think is really nice. And another way that you'll get um, new players in is they have the daily sign-in bonus sort yeah. of thing. So I've unlocked I, a couple of characters through that. I remember watching this and seeing Evolve and knowing from the very beginning I knew what it was going to turn into. I knew it would be a case of you buy the game and then you buy the DLC and it's got almost mm. like half as much as the game. And that's what really turned me off from it in the first place. And people were like, no, no, the, the developers have said they're just going to have like all of the monsters. You just get them and you can play. And we want it to be like a, a really cooperative thing that doesn't get too stale because you have to earn these things. But we want a little bit of progression in there. And I thought, okay, they've thought about it, but I don't believe them. And then they did exactly what I thought they were going to do, which was just go, okay, here's the game. Now buy all the monsters. And it was just that's why I think so many people got. Turned I was off really and actually um, hyped for. Um, it had massive Evolve. hype. Evolve was one of the biggest hype things. For I me was too. people showed it. They were like, "Whoa, that game!" Because I remember I was watching the trailer. Personally hyped like, for it. Wow, this looks cool. Because and it you, wasn't. You know me. Half Life Two mods, uh, <laughs> Turtle Rock Studios yeah. worked on the original Left 4 Dead, mm. and it's quite similar to this it's got that, zombies yeah, versus yeah. humans gameplay you get in Left 4 Dead. Because there are like little monsters or little like bits of wildlife around mm -hmm. as well that will attack so there's you. There's quite a they? lot of mini games there, so you can kill monsters as the hunters to get them to decompose, yeah. and then the monster can't eat them, to, but, the and then the monster wants to kill them to eat them, and then the bigger epic monsters they have a buff. Mm. And the hunters can take the buff if they kill it, or the monster yeah. can kill it's it like and take the buff. Not Roche. Albino uh, monsters. Yeah, in Dota, Roshan's in Dota. Yeah, in Dota there's like an equivalent that like if certain monsters spawn, you kill them, that you get a buff. Like Roshan, for example, gives you uh, something that turns you all invincible for like three seconds or something okay. ridiculous. But it's the same kind of concept. Yeah, and there's quite a lot of jungling, but there's no lanes or anything. Yeah. It's not like a mo. No, that's true. Although Overwatch, actually, go back to Overwatch again, recently, this is very quickly, had a cool, um, um, uh, they, you know, have weekly brawls like they do in Hearthstone for Overwatch. Mm -hmm. The one recently was called Mobile Watch, which is where you pick your character once at the beginning, and that's it, you can't change after that. Oh, I found all of the tavern brawls for Overwatch really boring. <laughs> yeah, they, they haven't been great. The, um, the brawls have, have been mostly see. The best one I've played so far was one that was literally just, you could only be Farah or Mercy. Mm. That was really balanced, and it was on Hanamura, so everyone's fighting over one point, and it's really difficult to actually win at all. Like it just goes yeah, to overtime. Yeah, you keep for healing each really other, flying in the sky, and reviving as well. But apart from that, they've not been great. I because you also um, for playing Tambro, I don't know if you know this or anyone else listening knows this. You actually get ten percent less XP for yeah. playing Tavern Brawl, which makes no sense. So you get less XP Not for Tavern the Brawl. It's got, just got weekly. Well, brawl, the weekly it? brawl. Yeah. You get ten percent less XP for, you know, playing this fun game, which I think is ridiculous because people aren't playing it anyway. What's, what's done? Why would you people punish aren't them playing for it already, right? And the first time I saw it, I thought, oh, that's cool. They, yeah. They've implemented something like they have in Hearthstone. It'll be a case if I get a car pack if I play it once, a, like once There's a week. There's no so rewards like, for playing. And it's not. Ball. You just go less XP for you. And you're like, why would I do this? Why would I purposefully chimp myself oh. in order to play a game mode that's well, they've not They've been really accurate. uninteresting, because I thought they'd do something really fun and interesting. It's like, you said one of the most interesting ones was literally when you pick a character, you can't change from them, which is really simple. And hmm. really That wasn't the interesting one. It was just, like, it was, a, it was an interesting concept at the time, because they didn't have, like... No hero stacking in, but it's just like but now you play do, one so. game of it, and it's like, oh, you can only play defense heroes. You just lose on attack. Yeah, this but, is really interesting. Or uh, everyone's soldier seventy six. It's Call of Duty. <laughs> uh, that one was quite fun, actually. Well, it, you had like you had super long health, cooldowns, and a really and long cooldown. Yeah, I, I didn't. I played like one game, and it was like, well, it's fun, but it was in whoever gets so. their ult first wins. Yeah, pretty much. But um. 
we will keep talking about free to play games. So back to Battle Evolve. Born? I put Battleborn on there because I think that's a game that desperately needs to go free to play. Yeah, it does. Because I, I didn't enjoy Battleborn. I played the open beta. Yeah, I played the open beta too, and I made was, a video about it. It was okay to start with, and I thought the humour was there from Borderlands. Yeah, yeah and that's then exactly I was just what like, I said. I was just like, I'm not interested in it past that. The multiplayer, I played it, it was really confusing, and I tried it, but it wasn't fun, so I was like, okay, maybe they put a lot more work into the single player. Mm. And I played a couple of the campaigns, but a lot of the bosses felt bullet spongy and yeah. not interesting. Division issues. You could definitely still see the humour there from the Borderlands, which is the most uh, annoying thing, because it could have been like a really great game, but they were charging, like, you know... This 30, 40 pounds yeah, for it. Yeah, like a proper game, wasn't it? And then you had to unlock characters and by that, buying them. Then Overwatch came out and it instantly dropped in price because they realised how screwed they were. Mm. It was like, Did no, no, we're always going to charge 45 pounds. This Overwatch comes out, we'll charge 30. Well, the thing is, the, the saddest thing is it gets compared to Overwatch a lot, but they're complete different games. They are, but they're super different. They could not be more different from each other. Mm. But I think it... Yeah, this, I think Battleborn desperately needs to go through to play at this point because of you know we saw this huge increase in player base in um, Evolve as soon as it went through to play, it was like seventeen thousand percent increase in player base. I think um, it was quite that, but it was a bit ridiculous. No, it, went, it, it was it like from like, like thousands yeah. to sixteen thousand. Um, no, it, was, yeah. it went from two hundred to sixteen thousand. Really? Yeah, it was that oh, bad. Really? Only 200 people yeah, playing? I thought it, it was, was that bad. early when I said there were like 12 people, and that's yeah, ridiculous. Here we go. Evolve player base increased 15,000%, 15, nearly 16,000. That's crazy. Yeah, I didn't it really did it increase that, that much because there was so little people playing it until it went free to play. That is mad. And I think, because I'm talking about Battleborn, I, there's an article where somebody literally was like, they looked at the, pe uh, the peak players on Steam, because you know you can look at numbers on Steam for... Yeah games um, on the weekend there was literally a thousand people playing Battleborn there was no one else playing that's, that's, that's like barely anyone for a you know game What's that needs ten a, people to be a AAA title. for like a multiplayer game or you yeah. need like four friends to play the well, but I really enjoyed Borderlands and to see you know this yeah this game. it's the problem is Borderlands is single player lots of story behind no, it no I think the single player for Battleborn was meant to be similar to Borderlands, but it just let it down. Good. Yeah, but I really didn't enjoy Battleborn, but I know some people do. I think I free to TV play would like have a really huge helped fan it. Of it. And I think going free to play now is probably your best bet before you lose any more players who yeah. might be interested in so, the game. Um, Battlefield Four? No. Yeah, no Hardline. Battlefield Hardline had the same problem. It basically saw a small peak in the number of players. Like it was. At one point, hyped to be the next like CS:GO, which was never going to happen. It was but, cops and robbers. Yeah, but um, then they they made that, and they like would release a DLC, and it would make it slightly better, and the player numbers would go off for like go up for like maybe a week, and then they'd just go back down again. So Battlefield Hardline had the exact same problem. But if that was free to play, at this mm. point, right? Battlefield Hardline's made most of the money it's going to make, unless you want to consider still, you know, supporting that only via microtransactions, right? Well, I think if people went back to Battlefield 4 because they fixed that. it. Yeah, yeah exactly, Dice LA yeah. put a lot of work into um, developing Battlefield 4 and make it like a fully functioning netcode with um, 60, um, yeah. 60 60 tick, tick servers, servers as like yeah. their baseline because it was like a unstable 30 tick and they have done some tests into Battlefield uh, 1 in the uh, closed alpha and they found that it is it has the 60 tick servers already so mm. hopefully DICE LA's worked on the netcode for that to get it to more real stable but um yeah uh, so other ga games you think would be good to go free to play wow wow I don't know what Wildstar is wow see now that's a good point though because they had that whole thing where you could set up your own server and play right where no they didn't well they they, they didn't someone made it yeah good, you can't right? there, there's not Friends Illegally of, playing on yeah, a private right, so, server but, and WoW setting up their own private servers are quite different. Yeah, things. but I mean, like, well, I've got friends at work that have tried to get me into WoW. I've always said no because I'm not willing to pay, and I know you can play for free, but I wouldn't want to get addicted to it because it seems like the kind of game you can quite you like. can play for free up to level twenty. Yeah, exactly. It's not a free to play system. But when he suggested that he set up his own server, I was more interested in it because like I can see that being okay, but 
if WoW was free to play, that would do pretty well to come back again. But I've got to imagine by this point, we, Blizzard would like just but they, must be heavily they, invested. They, in they could make it and Guild Wars Two style and Guild Wars One, like you just mm. pl- pay yeah, for the, the discs. Disc. Yeah. yeah, I would have. They would have that. so many more players. It would. Well, I would. I would be so willing to buy probably them. Probably the lowest. The, the last um, expansion has made the subscription numbers so low that they're actually going to stop displaying subscription yeah. numbers because they've realised how low they've got. Because basically, what they did was when they were working on Wars of Draenor, the system they wanted to implement was they were going to release an expansion every year to try and get as much content out so you could play through the entire expansion in a year. And by the time you finished, a new expansion would be out. Yeah. But what they were doing was they were developing Legion in Wars of Draenor, which meant that an entire year of um, content that would come out for Warlords was there was nothing because they were working on Legion. Yeah. So they had like the biggest content drought they've ever had and they had the massive drop in player base because they were doing nothing with the game and now with Legion they just said we've completely scrapped the idea for a, a yeah, expansion a year which is just not feasible. We can't make you know this standard of expansion that we are willing to put out in a year. Mm. So hopefully with Legion that they've put this much time of what they would have put into Draenor they will fix a lot of those issues and the player base will come back but yeah. I wonder if Wolves and Knots would benefit from free to play because I haven't gone back to Wolves and since Does Overwatch it still cost out. money? Yeah. Oh. yeah Overwatch is not free to play uh, Overwatch is not free to play <laughs> I think I own the game Wolves and Knots is not free to play um, it, I felt like it should be it's one of those games it's 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 got um, it, a lot of dev behind it, or at least it did. Ronald it? McGuinness was always really good at releasing like content updates, and they had like a really successful Kickstarter for Starstorm, mm-hmm. which I backed. Right, I backed that on on um, Kickstarter, and I have probably not played that map to its finished level because <laughs> Overwatch came out, and I was just like, I don't care about Awesome Knots anymore. Has it? Um, has it? So that could probably benefit. Has it always been because, seven pounds on release? No, it used to be like 14, but that's still totally acceptable. It was really cheap. It's always been a dirt cheap right, game. Right, okay. Because they were really small, like, indie dev stuff. Yeah. And they were... Overwatch is still a really cool game. It's awesome a really... Awesome uh, Sorry. Awesome Nots <laughs> is still a really cool game. Um, and it's got good gameplay. It's just... You don't... It, you can't get someone to play it. If someone likes MOBAs and you show them this they'll go that looks silly it's two dimensional I don't get it and it looks you know it's easy essentially but that's why I liked it you can't really show it to someone who doesn't like MOBAs because they'll see it and go oh it's like a MOBA I'm not interested in that whereas Overwatch you show it to like, oh it's a shooter kind of like a MOBA people have got abilities I like that it's got that sex appeal almost of um, a good game whereas also not such a case of I'd give it a go if it were free, but I wouldn't buy it. It's kind of it came out at a time where people were kind of like I've invested time into League or Dota yeah. or Smite, yeah. and they're like I don't need to buy another MOBA. Like mm. I've already got enough time invested in these MOBAs. Yeah, it's kind of 2012. Start playing. Start playing. It's quite awesome. Qu- yeah, quite a yeah. while ago. Because we got pretty good at awesome knots, and it was fun while it lasted. But now. I bet the player numbers have dropped. I don't. I. I've got no facts to back this up. I could look up also not players on Steam. Yeah, I bet it's relatively low again now. Player camera. First thing suggested. I would. I would assume it's a lot. Wow, that is low. That is low. Peak players a thousand. All time was twelve thousand. Yeah, that's not a lot of people. If that had gone replay, that would have so many more. It's not that it's a bad game, is the thing, right? It's got a lot of balance tweaks that have changed. Uh-huh. It's really simple. It's got neat mechanics, like you said, like the solo drop that other games haven't had before this. It just didn't take off because it was small. It's in two mm. D. It had right? the wrong business model. Stuff. Is what you're kind of saying, isn't it? For I think for so. the, for the time it came out. If they'd gone free to play to start with and supported it just with the skins, yeah, it'd probably have done better. Because I mean, it did the whole thing with the um, with Starstorm, which was the Kickstarter thing, and that worked really well for them. They got tons of money from that. Hmm. So, yeah. Well, one th- thing that is an example of a free to play game done well would be Evolve. I think that was done well. Yeah. And Wildstar. If it had been <laughs> free to play to start with. Hmm. Well, games that have gone free to yeah. play. Is it, like Wildstar came out and it wasn't free to play. I have no idea what it was. Well, this so is it's kind of like, like a trend of um, MMOs though. They came out full price, then became free to play. You you might know if I show you a picture of it. Uh... It's kind of like a more colourful art. Like it had a clear defined art style, 
and all of the abilities you had to actually aim them instead of just pushing buttons. Did you shoot I... like eggs or something and then you collected them and then they got picked up by ships? What was that? Was that no, fire strike? <laughs> No, but Wildstar was quite. I li I liked Wildstar because it did something different. Because if you just look at all the MMOs that have come out recently, like Guild Wars Two, included even even though I think it's a really good game, they all look exactly the mm. same. Wildstar's got that ratchet and clank vibe to it. They yeah, it looks really cool and it has its own unique art style. Like um, people are like, oh wow, when you're gonna like improve the graphics? They're like, uh, we don't think it would be viable to improve the graphics for the art style we have. We have a very distinct art style mm. that people like. Yeah, and if we made it like like every other, they've other already mode, then they've already reached a stage player. where you can't really see like the textures don't need to be improved in many areas yeah. because it's already uh, you can't see like the pixels and it has its art style. It doesn't really need it's to. It's a shame because there are games like this where I look at them now and I see these screenshots and I see the characters like that's cool that looks a bit ratchet and clanky I'd be interested in that but it's too late by this point because it's already had the hype it, whatever hype it's going to get it's not free to play. And or rather, it's now. It's <laughs> yeah, no. I'm not interested anymore, right? Right. Give it a go, though. It's free to play. Well, it's on Steam, so it's got about lower count than Awesome Knots, and that's saying something. No, it doesn't. Yeah, no. all-time peak. Oh, well, the all-time peak. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, that's still that's that's got to count for something. But have you seen? Have this, you seen though, the actually? peak player for when it went free to play? How much older is this compared to Awesome? Because Awesome's going in 2012, so I might not be being fair. Yeah, this isn't older than Awesome Knots. No, okay, yeah, there we go. This came out the 2015, 2016, I think. Mm. Um, what you, uh, you could talk about TF2, because that technically was a game that went through to yeah, play and did I, well. Yeah, I bought TF2 when it was part so, of the Orange Box, yeah. and I looked forward to... Um, Portal and Half Life coming out. I had no idea what TF2 it's was. The third of June, twenty fourteen. Yes, that's not what it came But yeah, TF2 going free to play was a massive change. It was crap to start with. Wild right? star though. The fact that you had gone to um, the free to play model basically meant that the number of hackers shot up. The benefits from being um, premium were not massive. Premium they were essentially enough. a case of yeah, you got a free hat. You didn't get as many restrictions on the items that you found, and you found cosmetics or something. I can't actually remember. You found more one. cosmetics. Yeah. You any got items, items you had before were vintage, but they were never worth anything anyway. Mm. The only thing it actually did for the time was massively increase the player base, which yeah. was sorely needed, and that's what was really killer for TF2. Uh, but also actually increase the number of hackers on it, which was a downside. But because Valve Attitude is pretty good, it it, it, it was offset. Like That's what like. happens with most games that go free to play. Like people have been saying on Evolve, they've seen more hackers yeah. now because it's quite easy to hack because it just doesn't cost you anything. Yeah, you just like oh, well, make it Or it with free to play games, if there's a competitive like I don't know if um, the matchmaking for TF2 has this yet, but you get more smurfing mm. because people yeah. are more yeah. willing to just make another, another account. account. This I see. I think this. That's why I don't think I can ever see Overwatch getting free to play, even if you had to like pay for new heroes, because they have already been so good at basically saying, find the hackers, ban them with like something that's assigned to their MAC address and their IP address. So they've bought the like these hackers have bought the game three times over and they still get banned every time. They give up at that point. I have not come across genuinely like I I, I will rage a lot if I think someone is hacking. Generally speaking, it's probably because they're good. In Overwatch, that doesn't even happen. You just don't see players that are blatantly hacking because it just it just looks like they all gotten killed by Blizzard going nope you guys are out mm. I don't think Blizzard ever have to change the model for Overwatch though no I don't think they it's like wow like, they haven't really had to change it until massive player drop and I'm not even changing it still so Blizzard, if, Blizzard if aren't Overwatch, one to change if Overwatch manages well, to last as long true. as TF2 did then I'll be super impressed because TF2 had, um, you know, a fairly large um, team behind it in the form of Valve, and they they've chimped it to hell now. It's basically dead to me. But um, Overwatch has got Blizzard behind it, and Wow has been going for a very long Blizzard time. Blizzard Activision, Daniel. They were acqui they were acquisited by them a while ago. Acquired by yeah. them a while ago, so now they're Blizzard Activision. Well, they, they yeah, acquired no, each other and made an even bigger mega corporation as the parent company. Yeah, so I'm I'm hoping that they uh, they keep it going for a long time because I need another fix like Tier Two. 
It's my like my brain sponge game. And I don't really care. Well, like, you say today I literally just played like turn level one hundred in it. Like you say they haven't changed their models. That's not true. So like with Diablo and I'm not saying um, Blizzard. I'm saying specifically for Overwatch. No, 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 no that's saying why I said the Blizzard hasn't changed oh, right, their okay. model. I say um, originally with like Diablo and Starcraft, um, they you had to buy the game. Yeah. But now they've changed this, so now with StarCraft 2, you can get the tr the free version, which gives you full access to the arcade, which is the, uh, for any Warcraft 3 fans out there, is the custom game equivalent of yeah, yeah, yeah. these custom games, which I think is good. But that is that uh, is not the main way the of playing this. They've kind of yeah, just put the offset and made it free so that they get one like to play the main game. They've made the trial for Diablo where you can play up to the Skeleton King. And, you, and they've got the free to play up to level 20 for a while. So Blizzard That's not a massive a change for me. I don't think that's a change at all. That's not their business model change. That's just like setting no. things off to advertise it in a different way. Well, they've made Hearthstone, Toby. So there's a massive change to their business model. Well, uh, yeah, but they, they haven't changed Hearthstone's model. It came yeah, out. You, you're saying Blizzard as a company make games and then quite... They, they stick behind it, is what I would say. But I was think I don't see why they haven't made a lot of their lesser flooding uh, titles free to play when they've seen how successful. Yeah, I, I is. don't know. Mm. It's weird. Yeah, I was surprised when Overwatch came out and it wasn't free to play. Like when, when I, I saw, saw the it, trailer and stuff, I saw the trailer, and I saw the all the skins and stuff, I was like, oh, this is going to be free to play, yeah, and they're going to they charge like, for skins. And then they were like forty five pounds if you want all the like star skins, thirty pounds if you want it, and we still made charging heroes. The fact that, like, to start with, it was all up in the air, and they did, you didn't know whether they were going to mm. just give you the heroes free or not. You were like, "What? I don't know where to put my money. Do I want my money? Do they want my money? Should I give them? <laughs> no, give them all your money. It's the only answer." I was, I was absolutely convinced that um, Overwatch was going to be a free-to-play game, and when I saw it, it really confused me because I was like, "You have, you've like, sh from what you've shown us, you've basically designed this game with microtransactions yeah. built in and a progression system." That you know, free to play players can play, and then people can pay for cosmetics and that sort of stuff and characters. Uh, we weren't sure whether you you could pay for characters and stuff, but it it seemed like a no-brainer. So yeah, I, I'm I'm kind of glad they didn't go through the much transaction route. I'm more happy to pay. Pay the, once, yeah. get all content is a great model as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Well, not all content, but I'd be more happy to do that. Like Base. they did, they do that with Guild Wars too. So you just buy the disc and you get the content. Yeah. And it, it works for that MMO, so I think they could easily do that for a while, and that'd be really nice. And they'd have a huge player base then. But we will move on to our final uh, topic of the week, which is, of course, uh, Toby's list, as oh, always. The, the, the anticipated section of the whole podcast. Everyone, this is the time that anyone's going to skip to, and you just want to see Toby's wish list. <laughs> what well, MOBS has um, got in this wish list now? Right, Toby's trying to clickbait me with Adventure Kappa list already. Because he knows how much I hate <laughs> clicker games, so he's already put Adventure Capitalist on his wish list. Even though it's a free to fucking play clicker game that you could just easily get, but it's on your wish list. It's bait. Are you going to go for the bait? Is the real question. How is that? Is this a VR game? Yeah, I did a VR game. It looked interesting. Don't go for that one. I can't talk about yeah, it. I already, I already know about Raw Data. Okay, good. You should, get, you should get this one. It's one that's really it's good. Free to play? No. Oh. It's <laughs> 23 pounds. You just haven't played. Recently came out. Haven't played the damn games I bought. You've played more of the new games that I have bought. Yeah. Uh, Vanishing Realms is really good. Yeah. Oh god. Do it. Free to play. What's again? Cr crush. What's Crush Crush? Crush Crush. More bait. crush, crush. <laughs> are we? Are, are you looking? Are, 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 are we actually? Are you looking for a fun this? and flirty game <laughs> to kill yeah. some time and make you laugh out loud? That's a crazy coincidence because it's been lucky for you. Welcome to Crush Crush, <laughs> the idle dating sim. What's an idle dating sim? It's casual. Oh, it's, it's a clicker game, isn't it? Yeah. You go AFK in it. <laughs> <laughs> so it combines everything you hate. I might get this game and play it. It looks great. It looks awful. Um, Early access <laughs> anime. I wouldn't see this. I've got anime the thing blacklisted. Is, it's not on my even Steam anime. It's list. like Western style. Why is that bear in a dress? <laughs> He's putting on his lipstick. I in am. app purchases. That's all I needed to know. In app purchases. Toby, this looks awful. <laughs> the word crush is on the screen. What is that? Your character? <laughs> You're yeah. like a white. Bold person thing? Someone spilling a load of cake. Can I just say, themselves. reviews, Whoa. very positive. 
Yeah, sure. You're the only reviewer. Yeah. Sure. I gifted a girl five thousand cars by accident. <laughs> oh no. Uh, no, not on the wish list. <laughs> Moving on. on. Well, I, I, can I just can I just defend myself slightly? I do like uh, these no. weird dating sims. That's why it's no. on my wish list. There we go. It's That's not a dating it. Sim. It's not no, a it dating is. Sim. You it is in some way. It's a clicker game. No, no. It's disguised as a dating sim. Yes, game, but it's a clicker game. It's a thinly veiled. But that's like all the other dating sim thing. Bejeweled games. Game. What's the difference? Are you saying that the bejeweled games aren't drastically different? No, 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 no. no. There's other like, dating sims that have like bejeweled mini games. Like it's literally so, just a bejeweled mini game. Like VR game. that's all it is. Is it? Yeah. Why do you want the Brookhaven experiment, Tony? Brookhaven experiment. <laughs> yes. It's a VR, it's a VR shooter, shooter horror game. Oh well, it's I awful. think you've already the one... you've already answered it then. <laughs> it's awful. It's like like is it a good game ish? I don't think it's a game. I think it's early access to stuff. But, yeah. So. Um, Oh no, it's not anymore. No, no other access. Full game. Uh, this was the one pounds. where there was that woman. The video of that woman really freaking out. She was like, "Ah, oh, I'm in VR, but I'm getting attacked." Yeah, VR is scary. Waltz of the Wizard is a game about mixing potions, but it's really scary as well. This one I can imagine being quite spooky, right? But at the same time, you've got a gun to defend yourself. If they brought us up like Amnesia. I just know my way out of there because the whole point of having is you can't defend yourself. You've got your lamp. I I will say this right now. It does look like a terrible horror game. However, it does. Because however, it's like, it's, it, you can't tell from this page. Yeah. And I'm added to my wish list. I'm kind of, if I were to get HTC Vive, I'd want. I will, this is one I'd want like check out. Yeah. So there's like, no way in hell that you could play a, a horror when virtual I first reality saw it, game. I thought it was a Unity Acid Flip. Yeah, it does. It had that so, look to it. I, to I, me. Yeah, I looked at it and then kind of thought it kind of is and kind of isn't. Like, there are some good things to it. I mean, they actually put effort to make it work on VR, so that instantly went, well, it's not, it can't just mm. be an asset flip. Well, the only reason I would ever put this on my witch list is if I desperately needed a substitute for laxatives again. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, you don't understand how scary, like, games that wouldn't appear scary are really scary in VR. Yeah, I like, love you know, scary games, Joe. Turret. You don't understand. Uh, you don't love scary I games. I do. You think you do, but when there's a monster you which think is you literally do, trying to eat but you face, don't. You I don't. really do. Blizzard coming back to you. You think you want private WoW servers, <laughs> but you don't. <laughs> All right, Blizzard, I, I'll trust you. Blizzard knows best. <laughs> what the hell is Screeps? Screeps? M-M-O-R-T-S, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Hang on, Screeps? Screeps is an MMORTS sandbox game for programmers. Oh! Where in the core mechanic is programming you actually your write JavaScript. AI. Yeah, this is you amazing. You control your coronary by writing write JavaScript, JavaScript, which operates 24-7 in a single persistent world filled by other players on par with this you. Actually, That's pretty neat. This looks amazing. It's early access as well. I mean, no, this looks dumb in a way because... Nobody's going to play this again no. past like certain things. But this is cool. This is someone trying something different, probably because they uh, did it as a school uh, project you know, or something. To the two people right? who actually want to play an MMORTS through JavaScript. Okay, no one wants to play an MMORTS to start with. Well, 79 but, people yeah. reviewed this. So. 79 That's the 79 people, people player, basically. Yeah. yeah. Well, add me to it. There's 80. Actually, is that true? That's 100 and... You haven't bought the game, Toby. Well, I will play it. At some point. Really? You're gonna learn JavaScript just to play a game? No, I'm I'm Wait, actually what? in the process of learning. Not Java oh, at the moment, okay. but I'm actually learning. Wait, you need CP what's CPU subscription? Thirty days of CPU subscription. After CPU subscription. Limited to ten Raise CPU. your CPU limit in the offline mode to the point depending on your game level. You can have a subscription plan. Oh, I didn't game. even know Steam had subscription <laughs> plans. You have to pay monthly for this game. Wow. Is it because it teaches you things? So after the 30 day period is out, so when you buy the game, you get 30 How days of CPU subscription, <laughs> and you can continue playing, but you'll be limited to 10 CPU in the online mode. The single player local hosted mode will be available without subscribing after version 1.0 release. So it's early access, and the version is... CPU, I don't get it. I don't know. I like think it's one a, thread per It's a bit stupid that you have to pay for it, even though it's early access. I don't like that. Early access MMO RTS subscription no, JavaScript. I mean, this is, looks like complete dog shit. <laughs> to start with, I was interested I'm because so interested it had, the fact that you could actually write 
Giles Toby, you're going to play an RTS taught, right? and then with a subscription. Right? That's okay, but the fact that I've just seen that CPU thing is probably right off. Yeah, the subscription no has put me somebody's, off. Especially that's no longer somebody's like pet project to say I'm going to yeah. make something that's cool about learning JavaScript. That was someone saying, here, how can I make money from the fact that I know JavaScript? It's not... How much even is it, though? It's... So, so if you actually want the base game, eleven pounds. Yeah, it's four pound ninety a month for six months. Yeah, and the fact that's that ridiculous. I'd rather just subscribe to Wow. Just, just Why make I... Wow. There's no mod. JavaScripting in Wow. But you can make your own um, UI mod in Wow. There you go. Well, no, let's yeah, let's face it. Actually, once you've um, played this game for the thirty days, you can just go and make your own scripts because you know JavaScript at <laughs> that point. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Put it in. Put They're it in Unity. Learn, learn a bit of Unity. You're selling a game about programming. No, I'll tell you what is you're doing. AI this is thing. literally the next level of beta testing things, where they get people. They release a game, they charge people for it, and they say, "Come and test our game and find all the bugs that, for us." This yeah, is worse. This is, di- come and build our game for us, and then we'll we'll steal all the code, and then we'll release it at full price next year. I don't imagine that's actually what they're well, doing, but you can see how this. I could think go this is going to be a, a Toby's wish list first. It's off my wish list. Oh, oh, wow. oh world first, happen. world first. World premiere. I don't think we found any game we like, Toby. That's on your. No, wish list but I think in the end, it's kind of is it does it make sense with all my wish list and today? Okay, we no. Can talk about very quickly about not a hero because we. Yeah, let's just go for not a hero. So I I told you to put this on your wish list after we start talking about Peter Molyneux, as we always do. <laughs> we always um, do. Yeah, that is not an exaggeration. I talk about it every day. Yeah. But it's made by the same people who made Oli Oli, the uh, skateboarding uh, game. That's quite interesting. Published by developer Digital as well. It's made by Roll7. So it's the people who did Oli Oli. Mm. And they've kind of made this interesting. When we, um, when we had the trailer and you were going through it, I was interested. I'm very keen to actually go and have a look at this, and it'll probably end up on my wish list. So I know, Jim Sterling did a video on this, and he said it's it's similar to Hollow Miami, but it's interesting enough to be different from it, and it's got quite fun, fast gameplay. And as you go on, it gets a lot it's a shame harder. Neither of you two have played McPixel because it is basically Hollow Miami with the McPixel art style. Hmm. Right. Well, we're going to any final thoughts before we end <laughs> the podcast. I like Overwatch. Can I talk I more like about it, it now? No, what do you button. mean? No. Talk more about it. We're running out of time, so we're gonna. Well, you can just. Do you have any final thoughts before we go? Anything you couldn't mention? Before we get to Danny, uh, I will just quickly Danny. say Steam updated its API uh, terms of service to ban CS:GO gambling. Thanks, Steam. Yeah, that's a good thing. Thanks, Valve. Thanks, Steam. So now uh, they've actually sent takedown notices to um, the, some of the biggest websites. Just surprise me. They should have done it a long time. And ago, one of their streamers, uh, Phantom Lord, who streams this CSGO gambling, was found to rig numbers when he gambled Doesn't on his website. Doesn't surprise me. The fact that these people own the websites that they were gambling on is just sick. The fact they don't release that information. And, and children could gamble without regulation. Yeah. Well, I mean, Valve is actually a problem here in, in and of themselves. The whole, I'm opening a crate with a key and I might get something good, I might get something bad, that is actually still gambling. And the fact that you're allowing mm. children to do that is probably against some kind of EU regulation somewhere, if you really Well, that's it. kind but of in game, though. You shouldn't normally, normally you can't get real money out of it. Sorry, Toby. Joe is just stroking a picture of Danny Dyer. <laughs> right, well, I'll give Danny Dyer's final thoughts. Uh, he wants to say. Pony game though in it doom secret FIFA nut, and he's replying to James Buckley, who we've just found out is uh, Jay Sorry. from the Inbetweeners, and he has a gaming channel by the looks of it, which is quite interesting. So, if you want to check out Jay from the Inbetweeners playing Doom, then check that out. That was something interesting we found the name out of about. His channel is uh, Danny supporting it on Twitter. Well so done, Danny. The name of his channel? It's like already completed it mate, oh. or something. His it's completed it, mate. Yeah, completed. <laughs> completed it, mate. Channel. Right. Completed it, mate. Is his channel. If you want to check that out, which is quite interesting. But that's the end of the show. So I've been uh, Joe, aka okay, Scorn. You can find me at uh, Scorn uh, on YouTube, uh, on Twitter at Scorn2000. Uh, as always, you can find the In Between podcast on our usual uh, YouTube yeah. channel. And what, what, what are you listening on right now? Yeah, the thing. Unless the we get SoundCloud. Unless we get yeah. Get SoundCloud. I'm not paying for SoundCloud. It's not happening. I'm Dan. You can find me at the local poker stop or alternatively a gym. 
Except I don't go to the gym. Nor do you go to local because the world isn't one Check massive out. local. Tony, you want to plug Channel 90? Well, no, I've like got the Tons of Dark Sea channel. Do you have it up now? No. <laughs> I've okay, still well, done shit at all. YouTube channel will exist, but not right now. <laughs> Alright, that's the end. Yeah, bye. bye.